take this opportunity to clear this meeting officially open and welcome everyone, uh, those who are in attendance uh, physically and those who are in attendance online. Uh, with that, I'll now ask that we stand for the national anthem. Thank you. <laughs> Australians all let us rejoice for we are one and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil, our hope is God by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. I'll lead us in prayer. Dear Lord, as we gather here this evening, we pay particular attention uh, to those in our broader community who are suffering as a result, sadly, this day of floods. Over the last week, we've seen many of our fellow Australians who have been uh, in very adverse conditions, dealing with difficulties seen only once in a generation. We sincerely hope that not only those who have lost their homes and their possessions, that they'll come through this safely. But we also, at this time, think of those in the emergency services fraternity who work so hard, many in a voluntary capacity, uh, to protect uh, the lives and indeed uh, the goods of their fellow Australians. So tonight, as we gather to make decisions on behalf of the Georges River community, we also recognise that we are part of a much bigger Sydney, New South Wales, and indeed Australian and world community. And we think of those who have needs uh, that really need our support here this evening. With these thoughts, our Lord, we ask for your support uh, this evening. Amen. I'd also take this opportunity to acknowledge the Bidigal people of the Euro Nation, the traditional custodians of the land uh, where we gather, and thank them for their uh, custodianship of this land. Uh, for tens of thousands of years. And uh, we certainly pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, please, councillors and uh, guests, take your seats. Um, I'm not aware of any apologies. I think everyone is either online or in attendance. Uh, so we'll move to the next item, just to advise that uh, you are reminded that this meeting is being recorded for minute-taking purposes and is also being webcast live on the Council's website, and this recording will be made available on that same website. Uh, the order of business is as shown in the agenda, and staff and public are reminded that this meeting is open. Doors to the meeting room are, are to be left open unless the meeting moves into a closed that is confidential session according to Section 13 of the Coding Meeting Practice. Council's Code of Meeting Practice prohibits the electronic recording of meetings without the express permission of Council, and mobile phones must be turned to silent during the meeting. Uh, disclosure of interests. I have recorded in front of me, and I'll just make that a little clearer, uh, from Councillors Aegis, Grekis, Kanjarski, and indeed uh, from myself, uh, the reason that's with regards to CCL 01421, 
um, and the assets the tender for construction of sports fields lighting uh, council aid just uh, his children made some time to use a park subject to the upgrade of lighting lighting so councillor greg is similarly because of her son's participation at renowned park uh, councillor Kanjarski because his children uh, play at referee sports on the fields in question and i'll declare because my son uh, trains at one of those parks with the lighting upgrade. Also from Councillor Greckus with regards to CCLO 15-21, um, as that's the Stronger Communities Funding Update July through December. As a son is a member of Renania United and a husband is a member of the Thurston Golf Course. Um, and the General Manager with regards to CCLO 14-21, the George River Foreshore Assets and, sorry, access and improvement plan as the principal place of residence is located within the original study area all of those are non-significant non-pecuniary declarations <coughs> uh, the next item number nine is public oh sorry oh, yeah any others i'm oh, sorry i went through the list and forgot to ask thank you mr mayor just uh, one in the um the environment plan committee which was to do with the uh, uh Environment 005-21, outcome of the public exhibition proposal. proposal. Uh, part of that, there's one part in there that my relative lives in the, in the street, sorry, in the street, and it's a PPR as residence therefore. <laughs> it's a principal place of residence and under the, as part of the LEP, therefore I'm entitled to stay and vote on it. Thank you. It's a funny bit noted. Councillor Castanius. Oh, you're right. Okay. Any others, sorry, any online that I've made missed? Okay, thank you. We now move to society public participation. And the first of those, uh, we have five of this evening, is Gabriel Chung, who I understand is in attendance and speaking uh, with regards to CCL 012-21, uh, the outcomes of the public exhibition and the planning proposal, uh, George River LEP 2021. Mr. Chung, if you'd like to join us, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Gabriel Chung and I'm a project manager. Uh, thank you, Honourable Kevin Green and councillors for letting me speak today. I have two areas of concern regarding the proposed rezonage of Nawi. Um, the first was uh, regarding the R4 zonage along Chamberlain, Mercury and Balforth Road. Uh, I'm all for progress for redevelopment. I asked the council to do this in a way that is not in, ex in the expense of families and children. Uh, looking at the George's River Council evidence base for local housing strategy report, the, the biggest group of people are families for children who live in the area, making 37%. Uh, but within the R4, R3 kind of zonage, 64% are catered towards units that are two bedrooms and under, or housing that's similar to that. Um, I want to ask the council just to consider setting up like a special kind of precinct that kind of protects families potentially moving in the area. Um, and when you make that decision, even maybe consider changing some of the controls to the FSR. Say you might want it to change it to point A and then create incentives for developers to create those bigger kind of lots that are conducive for family kind of living so they can increase it to one or 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, I think the people in the community and I've lived um, in Aoi for a while with my family um, and extended family have lived here for a while would support that. And that's for four reasons. You know, people move into Nawi typically for affordability. The second is there's a large migrant population. Um, and I come from that, from a Chinese background, making 29%. And, you know, multi generational living is very common, living under one roof. So there's bigger blocks allowed for that. Oh, yeah. And also with COVID, um, you know, many people require from home. So there's bigger living arrangements allowed for that. So that families not and you know people don't just survive and thrive um, the second kind of area of concern i had was regarding the parking and visitor space allotment in the precinct um, i know it's a bit early with this plan to discuss this but i thought it would be good to let you know because i think you know having enough parking and visitor car spots allows for that aging in place to occur um, there's a lot of research that says isolation and loneliness are important factors for the health and well-being, especially for older Australians. And, you know, it, increased parking and visitors means, you know, when you've got a 70-year-old friend or 
relative wanting to visit. They don't have to go around and around in circles just to visit you. Um, the second is, you know, sufficient parking reduces the demands for shared resources because it is an area close to the station. Um, so thank you so much for letting me speak tonight and just raising the points. And I hope that you would leave a legacy, you know, that you would be proud of for the family and the elderly that live in the area who are affected by this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Um, now we have Ms. Elise Borg, who's also in attendance and speaking towards a question with notice 05521, and that's the allocation of LRCI and FAG grant funding. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Councillor Catrus for his question with notice about the allocation of funding from the recently awarded $4.6 million federal grant from the Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Program. I wish to speak tonight as I think many residents would be shocked to learn that almost $2.1 million of this $4.6 million federal grant has gone towards part funding the construction of the new Players Pavilion at Hurstville Oval and the new Hurstville Golf Club Pavilion. When I first learnt this, I didn't quite believe it because anyone who has been following council activities for the past few years, as I have, would know that these two projects are already receiving $2.2 million and $2 million respectively from the $9.5 million received in round two of the state government's Stronger Communities Funds program. I thought surely these projects aren't receiving more government grant funding. But the officer's response in your business paper tonight confirms that I was wrong and that George's River Council, who currently has an application before IPART for a special rate variation to increase rates above the rate peg, has indeed allocated a staggering $6.3 million of state and federal grant money to a cricket and golf pavilion. There are obvious issues of concern with the allocation of these funds, one being that the Players Pavilion at Hurstville Oval will not benefit the broader community and grassroots sports. It will benefit a very small group of elite representative cricketers. Likewise, investing in a golf pavilion is questionable when golf participation in Australia is on a downward trend, with Golf Australia's own participation report in 2017 showing a national attrition rate of 7%. Did Council complete a capital review expenditure and business case to justify the need for these two projects? Secondly, Cricket in George's River seems to receive a disproportionate amount of grants and ratepayers funds. Take, for example, the $6 million Norma Neal Cricket Centre at Pensacks Park and the $3.1 million Cricket Pavilion at Harold Fraser Oval. What I find astounding is that I sat here in the council chamber listening to the mayor's speech about not buying overpriced pies on a Gold Coast family holiday and that sometimes you need to make tough decisions and rein in spending and go without. Yet the $4.6 million local roads and community infrastructure grant could have almost completely funded the council's $4.7 million road resheeting program outlined in council's budgeted 2020 and 2021 capital program. The Mayor may argue that the cricket and golfing pavilion projects funded by grants don't impact Council's bottom line, but the reality is that the grant funds could have been directed to subsidise essential community works that do benefit the broader community, like the road resheeting program. The Mayor would know that the cost of these essential works do affect Council's bottom line. So my final question tonight is, is it really good governance to direct $6.3 million of grant funding out of a pool of 14.1 to two infrastructure projects that benefit just a small portion of our community, especially when the funds could be directed to offset the cost of essential community works to help improve Council's bottom line? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. And normally I uh, don't get attacked personally uh, in public participation. So therefore, I'd never comment on people's contributions in public participation, but I would highlight the fact that uh, in all those discussions, I personally did not participate. So while you're welcome to take pot shots, uh, I do suggest that uh, you ensure that uh, you do get some facts correct. Uh, thank you. And as I said, be careful, councillor. And the, the, as I said, you, you participated in the vote, I didn't. The uh, the next, that's, thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, contribution is from Mr. The next contribution is Mr. James Yu, who's also in attendance and he's going to 
deal with CCL 012-21, Outcomes of Public Exhibition Planning Proposal, George of the Local Environmental Plan. Councillor Hindi, Manners has never been a strong point, but I'd suggest you learn some. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And because the speech is only around three minutes, you know, I speak on uh, behalf of the resident who is living in the Nawe, currently uh, Nawe House Investigation area. We are in the Mercury Street, has totaled uh, 60 of the family, which you now agree currently on the council proposal the plan. For only three minutes, please let me use it for the speech. The computer make them, they can speed more fast. The plan is unreasonable and cannot reach the state government's housing target in 2021 to 2026. The reasons are one, there is a circle of tall buildings on the periphery, but low buildings with one to two floors in the middle, sunlight, ventilation, dissolve and privacy are all big problems. Sorry, just couldn't look at the hands problem. So what are we concerned in? As soon as the council sent all the mail to all the residential, right? From the January, we has been referred by email or telephone to give us our opinion. But look like the council never listened to us say, till to the 8th in the March, we, we called to the council and getting some of the uh, like the information. Yeah, Obviously, Sorry, point of order. Yeah. I think there need to be some manners as well if you're asking about manners. Though when people are speaking, we listen. Thank you. Yeah. So can you carry on? Carry you please let the general manager know that too. The general manager is paying attention. No, not, yeah. no, the council never gave us the reply. We've been from the January, we're handing a phone call, email, right? We hope that they can just give us a response, but nothing. Even we has got a petition. For our uh, circle is a six-day family. We has got a visit meeting, then 38 family has signed the petition. I'm handing to the council. They still you know. I see, could not get any answer if you has got decision or whatever, right? Nothing happened. At least I was make phone call in the, I see the 10 or 11. I said, what's going on? Then they said, oh, obviously, they are object to all the, what, what the local people say. Then I say, what's the information? They ask me going to the online to check. Even for no people, you know, just so much the information. They will be step by one step. Let me find what's particularly the answer from the council. Obviously, this all the way I say the idea, opinion, they all the against, which they, they are all the same. Uh, the, the question they say, their plan is beautiful, it is perfect, right? Then what we, we are concerned in, as I said, we are in the middle, the Mercury Street and the Bray Road. Even this location, much close in the railway station. I really don't understand why they just, uh, let us, in the cross street, we are on the same street, the Mercury Street, right? We are in the middle of the center goes to the railway station, but the side in the, across the street, the Mercury Street, then all along can allow to the R4. Then our location only allowed to the R3. We understand this now the, like a horse shortage, right? Lots of operation. So we think that fine, you know, if the state the government want to just target more house the provider on the market. But you cannot be just in the same street. You cannot be given like a double stand, one street R4 and the one, exactly same the location, all right? One street R3. Then once I make phone call, the council, the, uh, the staff who was uh, dealing with the plan, they gave me three answers, so different. One, they said, because our block land is quite small, but we are majority of all the 450. Then across the street, the 600. Yeah, I, sorry. 
using for computer, but then yeah, it does more hurt. And sorry, now I gave I gave you some extra time as a result of that, but I would suggest you can have thirty seconds to finish up. Okay. All right. Okay. So now the problem is, for, if the council said they follow to the like a sixty-five AGD, like the, for apartment or guide or whatever, right? They should be. They said it has to be considered like the overshadow or privacy or whatever, right? But once if the building or the surrounding, like the you guys all sit in the in the around it, right? our location in the middle towards the your chairman, then what's the privacy would be concerning, right? That's why we hope you know if the council will be planning for the old R four where we go ask for as well. This is the best solution. But I has got a lot of speech now it look like I only getting a quarter. But we should be getting three person, two people maybe not allowed to come in. Yeah, but as you say. It's then you, also yeah. sorry what I be say to you. I was make phone call last Friday. Sorry and then sorry. for the casting sorry. Yep. No, yeah, yeah. Not, yes, it had, it had three time. minutes. Okay. In fact yeah. I gave you an extension because yeah, of the whole for team. Yeah. So we thank, try to thank the council not listen to us what we well, say. As I say, I've been paying great attention there. Thank you. The next speaker is Karina McDougall with regards to CCL um, 01821, uh, which is the report on an outstanding council resolutions. And uh, I understand that Karina is online. Hopefully I can hear her voice soon. Please, Karina, the floor is yours. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Karina. Please. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll start speaking. Thank you. I wish to speak today to put my submission to Council and to raise further public and media attention on the issue of the ongoing closure of South Hurstville and Oatley Libraries. On the 25th of March last year, Council closed these libraries due to the impact of COVID. At that time, numbers of locally acquired infections were increasing rapidly and most of Sydney was in lockdown. Now, 12 months later, most of New South Wales has returned to almost complete normality. Numbers of locally acquired infections have been extremely low for some time. For most of this year, the number of cases has been zero or single digit. Shops and gyms are open. Parents are back on school grounds. Cafes and restaurants are serving. Sports clubs are back and playing in full swing. Indeed, for the last few months, there have been crowds of fans at Jubilee Stadium packed in to watch the Sydney FC play. Next month, huge numbers will flock to the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And yet, still, our libraries at South Hurstville and Oatley remain closed. Still, there is absolutely no word from Council about when they will be reopened. There is no plan, no statement of intention. In other local government areas, libraries reopened months ago with a COVID safe plan. I discussed this personally with the librarian at Miranda. Like South Hurstville and Oatley, and indeed like so many other places open to the public, Miranda Library only has one entrance and exit point. The difference is that unlike GRC, Sutherland Shire Council has not used this as an excuse to keep the library closed. Instead, that council has taken the trouble to put in place an effective COVID safe plan in order to allow the library to reopen and get people back borrowing books and promoting reading. There is absolutely no reason why our local libraries should not be reopened with a COVID safe plan and this should have happened months ago now. COVID is no longer an excuse to keep the doors shut and bolted and the people out. Make no mistake GRC, this excuse does not wash with the community. Our smaller libraries at South Personal and Oatley are highly valued by the local community. Their presence is important and, in, and is greatly missed. Late last year, the SMH reported on the ongoing closures of these very libraries. Like the child in that article, my children also love to visit our local library at South Hurstville and borrow bags full of books. They miss that greatly. The community wants and needs our libraries back. These are community assets. Council has a duty to provide access to them to the people who pay for them. Council has no right to close them indefinitely and without proper justification. Today, our residents are paying, paying higher rates and yet we are being deprived of our community assets, including our libraries. This is, this is simply unacceptable and must be resolved immediately. Thank you. Thank you. We now move to the next speaker who is also uh, in attendance and that's uh, James Littis who is 
Taito with Design Collaborative, and he is speaking to CCL 015-21, and that's the draft budget consideration of Hurstville Revitalisation Project. Thanks, James. James, you need to find a red button. That's it. Sorry. It was on. I turned it off. Um, uh, Mr Mayor, councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm here on behalf of um, uh, not only Thomas Hotels, but other uh, business owners in the vicinity of the um, Palm Court car park. And, it, and its proposed redevelopment is of concern to these businesses. Um, we did write to council on the 20th of August last year, um, as invited by council to comment on the proposal. And uh, of those businesses, that the concerns were with respect to the loss of that parking, the convenience of that parking. Um, that was the, one of the, the main areas of concern. Um, once we put that submission in, um, we did receive correspondence from council stating that um, they would have a look at the submission and, and come back to, uh, on it in terms of further information. Uh, my file has then got a very large hole in it and doesn't appear to have anything else happen until very recently when my client contacted me very concerned about this proposal um, proceeding further and in fact um, addressed the, the committee with respect to that matter very recently. Uh, I'm here before you today because I haven't seen any um, report uh, with respect to the public submissions that we made. Um, I looked in your committee papers for the cultural committee where the matter was previously considered and I, I don't find any correspondence there. So the concern that we have is that whether or not this matter has been looked at um, as it should have been in terms of the submissions that were made and any alternative considerations to the, the concerns that have been raised by local businesses, which for that part of Hurstville, that park is very important. It might only seem like 21 car spaces, but they're very good short-term car spaces that mean a lot to those businesses that are nearby. And by simply saying that people will park somewhere else and walk um, isn't really an answer for those businesses. So, um, without any information, I, if I put myself in your shoes, councillors, and, and if what I'm saying appears to be the, the case to date for my client, um, I just think that, that there seems to be a bit of a hole there in terms of information to begin with. Um, and then in terms of the process, I, I don't know exactly what's occurred because I would expect uh, being an experienced plan of some 30 years that these sorts of things come back to the community for further discussion or or some sort of cons further consultation, which doesn't seem to have occurred. Um, so there are concerns, councillors here, um, that I raise for your consideration, your decision making with respect to these matters. That is the, the way this process has unfolded um, and the concerns that have been raised and, and just the, the lack of alternatives that appear to exist uh, for these businesses in terms of the parking that's available. So I'll. I'll leave that for you for your decision making, but that's the submissions we made. Sorry, thank you very much, uh, James. And that brings us to the conclusion of the public participation. I'll now move to item 10 on the agenda, which is the confirmation of the minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 22nd of February. Do I have a um, move for that motion? Councillor Lansbury, thank you. Seconded, Councillor Hindi. Any discussion? Put the motion all in favour, so I against declare it carried. Uh, we now move to the next item, which are two mayoral minutes. Uh, the first of these is with regards to International Women's Day 2021. On Monday, the 8th of March 2021, I joined other councillors in attending the Georgia River Council International Women's Day Women, Women in Breakfast, Business Breakfast, held in partnership with the St George Chamber of Commerce. At the event, we heard from three incredibly talented, courageous and successful local woman, women entrepreneurs. Uh, Tania Kasanias, our Marketing and Strategic Partnerships Officer, was the MC for the event, did a wonderful job. Sarah Cummings, Principal at Sarah Cummings Consulting and Co-Founder of Teach Ted Early Education Story Series. Uh, Philippa Aslanis, uh, Executive Director at Intimo Lifestyle Brand and Catherine Lizard, a local cafe owner turned business consultant, shared their personal stories in developing intriguing business ideas and building successful business models in a diverse and supportive local community. 
I was pleased to see more than 140 community members, including representatives from local peak business bodies, schools, New South Wales Police and Government, gather in Hurstville to hear from these three truly inspiring local businesswomen about how Georges River's healthy business ecosystem could help successful startups grow and discover how to tap into bigger markets. Georges River as a community and economy has shown incredible resilience in recent months. Many local businesses have managed to increase turnover during the pandemic. Our council has been highly supportive of local businesses with the implementation of a $47 million economic and social recovery plan that includes $180,000 in recovery grants awarded to small businesses. On International Women's Day, Council was able to demonstrate what a great place Georges River is for business and how diversity is an important component of any business model. Ticket sales of nearly $3,000 will be donated to the Women's Crisis Accommodation Centre in the Georges River area. The feedback I have received from many who attended the event was overwhelmingly positive and many are looking forward to our next business event. The quality of the event, both in terms of the content and the organisation, was first class. Therefore, I move that Council A thank the guest speaker speakers at the Women in Brick Business Breakfast, Sarah Cummings, Catherine Blizzard and Philip Aslanis, who generously gave their time on the day, and B, the Council congratulate all staff involved in such a well-organised and well-received event. I'll put that motion. All in favour say aye. Aye. Against the Carrot. The second mayoral minutes with regards to Clean Up Australia Day. Groups from across the George River area celebrated the annual Clean Up Australia Day on 7 March 2021. This national event is a day dedicated to removing litter and conserving our environment. This year, there were 36 community school and business groups that registered a clean up site in the George River area with approximately 500 volunteers in total. I visited and spent time with nine community groups, Dennis Kindergarten, Met Strata, Warrior Road School, George Running Group, George River Bush Care Group, George Acogra Bay Progress Association, George River Young Liberals and local parents and children, as well as hosting the George River Council and Stormwater Shepherd site at Cars Park. George River Council and Stormwater Shepherds partnered together to host a large cleanup site at Cars Bush Park. The controlled outdoor event was COVID-19 safe, implementing staggered start times and event registration. A total of 90 volunteers worked in groups of 10 to collect litter across the park surrounding bushland and foreshore. Over 1,500 pieces of litter were collected from the site, consisting mostly of small microplastics and cigarette butts. The volunteers at Cars Park then enjoyed a barbecue as thanks after their hard work. I wish to thank the Stormwater Shepherds for their involvement in such a successful event at Cars Park and providing important litter and environmental education to the Georges River community. Thank you to Ocean Watch Australia, who worked with local oyster catchers to host a large clean-up along the Georges River from Cogra Bay to Tower Point. This great effort resulted in litter being removed from the Georges River and assists Council with supporting the conservation of local marine wildlife. Finally, thank you to the Council's Environmental Sustainability and Waste Team for facilitating Council and community cleanup sites and hosting a successful cleanup at Cars Bush Park. Council will continue its litter and waste removal projects throughout the year in order to keep the Georges River clean, litter free, and to continue to protect the local environment. I therefore move that A, Council congratulate and thank the range of community groups and organisations involved in the 2021 Clean Up Australia Day on 7 March 2021, and B, the Council thank all staff involved in facilitating clean up sites and hosting a successful clean up at Cars I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Second to Council. Any any discussion? Put the motion all in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against, declare it carried. The next item is condolences. I understand, Councillor Lansbury, you wish to uh, uh, lead there. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Lukes, it's my sad duty to advise Council of the passing of Jim Cahoon of Connells Point on the 27th of February 2021. Jim was aged 90. Jim was a lifelong resident of the former Cogra LGA, now known as George's River, and he grew up in Hillcrest Avenue and was the eldest of five children. And he was also known as the patriarch of the family. Jim went to Hurstville South Primary School and as an adult, he went on to live in the Coles Point, Coal Bay area with his wife, Jean and daughter, Maggie. Jim was a plumber by trade and worked with the water board for a number of years before returning to work for himself. I believe that was because he really didn't like working for the water board. 
Um, Jim was a very well respected and well loved member of our community and he was president of the Connells Point Progress Association from 1989 to 2015 when he retired as president. He stayed on as vice president to support the association and his community. Jim and his wife Jean attended many Cobra Council meetings back in the 1990s and Jim regularly engaged with councillors representative of Connors Point Progress Association on various council traffic and other neighbourhood matters. Jim also served a term as councillor for Middle Ward in the former Cobra Council in the late 1990s. I first met Jim in late 2003 when I was preparing to run for council the following year. I recall thinking straight away what a thoroughly decent bloke Jim was. He was a real gentleman, honest, helpful and a true true old school gentleman. Jim was genuinely one of those people that no one could ever say a bad word about. He used to contact me regularly to raise concerns with council matters on behalf of the association and in support of his community. He also received two community service awards from the member for Oatley, Mark Kure MP. Um, one of the other things I do remember about Jim, whenever we did have a conversation, he was always ready to laugh. You know, he, we might be try discussing something that was quite a serious council issue from his perspective, but he always had a, a really lovely sense of humour that went with it. Um, Jim suffered some health issues later in life, but he remained at home with Jean caring for him until October last year. He then moved to the Shangri-La nursing home at Hurstville, where he remained until his passing a few weeks ago. A celebration of Jim's life was held on the 9th of March at Olsen's at Sutherland. And I understand that despite the COVID restrictions, it was very well attended and a number of speakers paid glowing tribute to Jim for his long and well-lived life. I would like to pay my sincere condolences to Jean, Maggie and to Jim's family and friends for their loss and to extend my thanks to Jim for his invaluable contribution to our community over the very many years. He will be greatly missed by all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any other councillors who wish to uh, raise a condolence motion? No one online? Okay, I'll, sadly I have to uh, record one. And that's to uh, John Campbell, OAM. John Campbell was a highly respected and highly regarded um, resident of Oatley. Um, John uh, received, I think it was about four years ago, his uh, OAM for services to the community, uh, particularly with regards to charitable organisations. Uh, and this was a particular focus where not only he received an OAM, but a number of other awards. Uh, for his contribution to the St Vincent de Paul Society, where he served as a member for 59 years. Um, he's so, so, so a great contributor. Uh, John, with his brother Doug, uh, was well known uh, for the business that they used to run in Mortdale, Campbell's Paints, uh, which was a long-serving local business until uh, they both retired. Uh, John was, I think, about 88 and he's passing on Friday. Uh, so he'd been retired for a number of years. On retirement, um, made a contribution as long-serving uh, president of uh, Bankstown Golf Club. Uh, and as I say, was heavily involved with his community in, uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, he's had some uh, health issues, uh, but still uh, lived at home with his uh, wife, Pat, and certainly received great support from his daughter, Sally, and uh, also from his son, Michael, who lived uh, lives in the Southern Highlands. As I say, uh, John Campbell, highly regarded uh, in the local community, particularly uh, at a lady of Fatima Picos, where as I say, he was a, uh, a great servant, particularly uh, to the St Vincent de Paul, uh, working, uh, as I say, for 59 years, looking after uh, those who were uh, in need. And as I say, a sad loss to, uh, to our community. And uh, as I say, we pass on, I'll certainly pass on my um, thoughts and uh, concern, uh, condolences to uh, to his wife Pat and uh, son Michael and daughter Sally. Uh, if there's no other condolence motions, I'll ask that we please stand and uh, observe a moment of silence. Thank you, councillors. 
Uh, the next item is uh, committee reports. The first being the report of the Environment and Planning Committee meeting held on the 8th of March. I'll defer to the Chair, Councillor Hindi. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move the recommendation of the Environment and Planning Committee for items E and B 4-21 to E and B-21 as detailed below to be adopted by Council. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, second to Councillor Teak. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, there is an issue. There is an issue. Can I? Yep, Mr. Sir. Mayor, it's Nick Catherine. Yeah, I can hear that. Yep. Uh, environment 0021 uh, indicates that Council consider the allocation of $40,000 to the 2021 2022 budget. Um, I presume that we've got to consider it. And if in this case we are considering it, can I actually move something in this case? No, no, sorry, Councillor Catrus, just, just to confirm, mm. uh, if, we, if we approve all the recommendations, that basically means it will go into the discussion uh, for the, uh, the budget allocation, uh, which is, yeah, and so that has, has been considered and it, it is being taken forward into those mm. budget considerations. So that's what you'd actually be voting for, okay? All right then. Thanks. So I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion say aye. aye. Against declaring aye. carry. Thank aye. you. We now move to the Finance and Governance Committee report. Uh, Councillor Battalani. Thank you, Mr. May. Mr. May, I'll present the um, recommendations from the Finance Committee, FIN 008, through to F. I N O one five plus F I N O five A. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. If I can withdraw one item from that committee meeting, please, Mr. Mayor. Uh, certainly, while I think of it, number nine actually is already uh, uh, withdrawn because that's the next another item. It's not on, this, on the agenda separately, but yeah, I, I take what you're saying, Councillor about Hardy. Yeah, Councillor Lee, which one did you wish to pull for take out? Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, was Councillor Battalardi saying yeah. something? Yeah, sorry, Councillor Battalardi. FIN 009, there was a recommendation which was to uh, move it to the Council. Yeah, oh, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, it, it, it's in the Council support. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Semantics, but you're right. Sorry, Councillor Elmi. Uh, FIN 013-21, the draft budget consideration of council award discretionary funds and program results. Okay. So, yeah. so as any others we wish to take out or are we moving the rest in Glover? Okay, I don't hear any others. So uh, was the original motion seconded by, I'm sorry, did we get yeah, Councillor Simington. Oh, Councillor T. Oh, Councillor Symington. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Symington. Okay, so I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. aye. Against the parent carry. Councillor Elmere. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, with regards to FIN 013-21, um, I'd like to move the original recommendation by council officers in that committee meeting. Um, and if I have a seconder, uh, I'd like to uh, say a few words. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second that. Councillor Kanjarski, I think. Yep, that's right. Thank you. Um, so just to the staff, could we, uh, from those for those of at home, just make that amendment the full screen so that we can make it out? Yes. Sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah. 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 We'll just uh, get it typed up. Yeah, sorry, we obviously had no notice of this, so we're just looking to uh, get get the wording pulled out and put up.
We've got it. Thank you. Okay, the wording's there. Councillor Elmi. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for that. Uh, councillors, uh, the reason I pull this out um, is because I want to draw attention to a number of things regarding this and, and remind councillors of how effective the council award discretionary fund was in circumstances that were before us over the last two years. Now, from a from a procedural point of view, I think it's it's definitely um, worth considering that we put we reallocate or we re uh, we move seventy five thousand um, dollars allocation into the draft budget for twenty one twenty two to go out on public exhibition so our community gets an opportunity to let us know uh, what their thoughts are with this allocation of seventy five thousand dollars. Now, over the past two years, we've uh, had a successful program of delivering um, some funds to community groups, charity groups, uh, members of the public that have uh, undertaken representation for our local area um, on a world stage. And they have come in as funds that have been well utilised and very much well welcomed. Um, over the course of the year, we have two opportunities to provide grant funding to our community and they are generally six months apart. What these council award discretionary funds essentially do is expedite those processes and allow members of the community or charity groups within our community to have access to those funds in a, in a faster manner. Now, over the last two years, we've seen circumstances where people have represented our local government area um, in, in on the world stage or if we've had community groups that are holding charity events that require assistance in um, their charity days or whatever it might be where they've turned around they've requested off uh, their councillor representative or multiple councillors assistance with those days or assistance with those programs to then put an application forward to council officers to have all the probity checks in place and then for that to be then decided by council. Um, I think this is a good process and I think it, what it does is it essentially allows access to these grants on a monthly basis for our community. It assists in those charity groups to keep putting on those events, to keep maintaining all those, uh, all those days that we take for granted and the work that they do across, it, across the board in our LGA. It assists them in having access to these funds when they need it, not turning around and telling them in six months time, uh, put an application in for your grants program and then we'll see what, what happens from there once a panel decides on what, what should be done. These are only very small grants and the allocation of $75,000 essentially halves the amount that was available over the last two years. Now, I think one thing that's important is to realise that this is not $75,000 that is coming out uh, that is put in as extra money into the budget that we need to find funds from somewhere. This is essentially $75,000 that's already there in a grants and donations budget um, allocation. And merely what we're asking is councillors, let's put this in the 2021-22 uh, budget for, to go out to public exhibition so that therefore the community can have a say, let us know what happens, right? For those funds to be then accessible to the incoming council at the end of the year. Um, councillors, I'll put this motion forward to you. Um, I, I really do believe that this is a great opportunity um, to keep continue providing uh, assistance to our local community groups and I'll leave it there. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Kajaski, do you wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Kajaski. No, I'll reserve my right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, does anyone wish to speak against the motion? Mr. Mayor, I have a, a question. Coun Councillor Symington, question? Yes. Um, Councillor Almir said then that if this goes out to public exhibition, it will then be available to the new councillors. Is that correct? It won't be available to us? That's correct. This is for the 2021 yeah. 22 budget. That's in section B. Okay. 21 22 budget, yeah.
It's, it's in the it's also in the recommendation so in the first instance there's consideration of this in the draft budget for next year and if it's approved obviously uh it'd be for allocation uh, after yeah. the september elections any other questions or anyone wish to speak against the motion councillor hindi oh. oh sorry councillor castellian it's all right apologies sorry three years to mayor I, uh, I tend to disagree with this motion that uh, has been forwarded here as we obviously uh, the tertiary award funds were taken away, but I feel that we should let the next council decide uh, whether they would like a discretionary award fund uh, in, the, in the next council. I don't think we should be the ones deciding for that for them. So I will be going against this motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Any other speakers for the motion? Speaker against? Councillor Hindi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think we all know about the uh, discretion reward fund, and it is good and it's helped some people. It uh, it short short circuited a few a uh, few um, procedures that we have to follow, and it does help. However, the concern is not about the discretionary councillors award fund. It's not about here tonight. It's about we are trying. We're going to make a commitment for the new council. The new council may choose they don't want it. They may not choose 75,000 and they choose 200,000. They may choose less. They may change the rules. It is not up to us to decide what the new council, especially when we're going to go on exhibition, vote on it and say it's ready for you councillors, but then we can't use it between July and August. Now, I don't have a problem not using it between July and August. I don't have an issue, but we should not be committing the new council or anybody to any expenditure. Now, the question becomes is, oh, but let's go on exhibition, put it in the in the budget. You can still do a quarter of review and you can put it in the budget. It's only $75,000, so it's not a big, big issue, right? We can have that. The second issue becomes, we let the new councillors listen to the community when they go out on exhibition for that particular item. The, that community can write to them, email them, not email us. It's them, the new people, they're gonna use it and they'll hear from them what they want and they don't want. So why are we committing this? This is all about trying to commit to new council to expenditure that we don't need to, right? At the moment. Uh, so all, all we're asking is, and people saying, oh, well, but, you know, at least they'll know they've got the money. So when they get in there in September, they can't they can start spending it. Well, it's very simple. You get there in September, I'm sure the general manager is very efficient. She'll put one in, um, in um, October at the public exhibition by November, it comes back, you vote on it in December and you've got the money, whether you want 75, 100, 200, whatever the new council wants, and they've got six months to spend it. 75,000 is not much to spend in six months. They can still do it. We spent 150 in one year, 75 is half in six months is not a problem. That's all we're trying to say. We're not saying, councillor and me, that it's not a good idea. It is a good idea. Council has chosen it, they've done it, fine. Let the new council decide whether it's a new, a good idea, bad idea, whether they want that money to come out of the community grants. There's $400,000 there. Maybe they don't want it to come out of there. Maybe they want it to come out of somewhere else. Maybe they want to, uh, not 75, maybe they want 100, 200. We don't know. So we should leave it to the new council who get elected by the people to decide what they want. We don't want to commit those people to say, this is what it is and this is what the community told me. And that new council comes in and says, mate, I don't want it. But the, the, the other councils before us, they committed us to it. What can I do? I've got to have it. I don't like it, but I've got to have it. So why are we doing that? That's all I'm asking is, and if you look at the alternate motion was that this matter be deferred for further consideration by the newly elected council following the local government election in September 2021. It's very simple. By, by December, you'll have a decision which way you want to go with it as a new council and they can decide what they want. That's what we're asking councillors. Thank you, I should just point out, councillors, this is consideration of the 2021-22 budget. So, yeah, so all, I'm, all I was about to say was that this council will in fact be making decisions for 21-22 uh, in terms of all budget items. Now, they so whether that whether that applies to road sheeting or whether it applies to LEPs or wherever funding will be allocated, um, that will be in the budgetary process. And as Councillor Battelardi has pointed out on numerous occasions, um, you need to be able to uh, 
justify changing that budget. Um, and that, uh, and obviously, the new council would have the opportunity to do that, and that's uh, and that's fair and reasonable. All this is is looking at number B. The council consider the allocation in the discussions and perhaps put it in, uh, put it out for community consultation. But just so we, we all know that um, the budget allocation for the next financial year uh, has to be determined by this council whether it's for 75,000 or for a $5 million project. Okay, anyone else we should speak on the motion? If not, I'll ask Councillor Elmir if he wants to have his right to reply. Um, no, ma'am, uh, I think I've made all the points that I need to and uh, my points still stand respectfully. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll put the motion. Uh, those in, oh, so we might, uh, as we had speakers against, we'll have the around the grounds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll take your vote, please. Uh, I'll vote for the amendment. For the amendment. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, Councillor Ages. Yeah, I'll vote for the amendment. Oh, it's actually a motion, Mr. Mayor. Just oh, it's yeah, this is the motion. Yeah, my motion. Apologies. Sorry, and Deputy I'll, Mayor, Councillor Ages. I'll still vote for it. Ages. Yeah, thank you. I'll vote for it. Four. Thank you. Yes. Councillor yes. Badlardi. Against. Thank you. Councillor Elmia. Four. Thank you. Councillor Brekus. Four. Councillor Hindi. Against. Councillor Castanius. Yes. Against. Thank you. Councillor Catteris. Against. Councillor Konjarski. Four. Councillor Lansbury. Against. Councillor Liu. Four. Thank you. Councillor Payer. Against. Councillor Symington. Four. Councillor Ted. For the motion. Thank you. And Councillor Wu. For the motion. Nine votes for Mr. Mayor. I declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. We now move to the report of the Assets and Infrastructure Committee. Uh, Councillor Ages. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to just move that committee uh, meeting of the assets and infrastructure as as it stands. Is there a second to that? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Symington. I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against. Aye. aye. Against. Declare it carried. Uh, the report of the Community and Culture Committee, Councillor Gorekas. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to uh, move the recommendation. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, can I just pull one out? Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Gregus. I just wanted to pull out um, the on CCL 015 21, uh, COM 010 21, the draft 2020 22 budget consideration of personal revitalisation project. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items that anyone wishes to pull out? Okay, I'll put the motion as moved by Councillor Gregus. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Against, aye. clear it, carry. Oh, I, I must have, I didn't get a second, I moved straight to it. No, seconded, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. I thought Councillor Simon can second it, actually. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, Councillor Simon. No, Councillor Amir. Um, Councillor Amir has now, so it's, the motion still stands. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Castanius. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to move an amendment to COM 010-21, uh, which will well, be... Well, you can move a motion, actually. There's no motion. motion. Yep. Yep. The motion uh, is um, to retain the existing car spaces at uh, Palm Court Car Park, A, and that B, council traffic engineers looking to improving access and exit points uh, or just exit from Palm Court Car Park. I just wanted to briefly speak on this. Is there a second to that motion? Yeah, I, we just got to get the wording of that. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Badalati. I've got your seconding of that. Thank you. Thank you. 
the council traffic engineers Yeah, that sounds, thank you. Sounds okay. Yeah. I just, that's fine. Happy with that, Councillor Castanius? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if you're not here. I'm going to leave the rest in, I suppose. Yep, it's up to you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Short. I just wanted to briefly speak on this, sorry? Part B. Yep, it's gone. Investigate improvements to access and egress points to the existing car park. Okay. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm a small business owner myself, and I appeal. Appeal. I, the reason why I pulled this out is because I feel very strongly about uh, our small business and taking away car spaces or car parking is detrimental to the uh, to small business. And I feel that this particular strategy was premature. Uh, and here was the issue: is that I found that council's position paper on the car parking strategy findings. Was that, that was adopted in May 2020 uh, meeting tells us that the displaced parking from Palm Court was not being accommodated at that time. So, not only has uh, you know businesses been affected by COVID, but um, taking away car spaces where having them being replaced causes a huge impact on their trade uh, for for a lot of the businesses on Forest Road. Uh, also, Forest Road has a lack of parking uh, in itself. Um, I believe that the strategy is needs a little bit more thought in regards to the parklets, uh, taking away car spaces also on Forest Road uh, could be detrimental to a lot of those businesses on Forest Road also, which will also um, you, you know, impact the foot pedestrian or the foot traffic on Forest Road itself. Uh, the fact that um, the points have been raised about minor accidents, uh, which um, we don't have any police, police reports to warrant that or to for evidence, but uh, I beg to ask that the reason why that is happening is it's because it's a very much used car park and uh, taking away 22 car spaces potentially means a loss of a minimum of $17,500 per day and potentially uh, a, a loss of 6.5 to 7.3 million dollars a year. Uh, so I believe um, that is not a suitable place for open space uh, due to the cars, the fumes of cars and trucks that go by there. Uh, therefore, um, Hersel Plaza is probably a more optimal place to mingle and congregate and have lunch at, at where people can, uh, you know, go to rather than have a smaller space there. I think it was just. Uh, it feels like it was a bit of an open space grab. Uh, I know that personal has a lack of open space, but I feel that at this point in time that um, it is unwarranted for those number of reasons. Um, we've seen what's been going on with some of the business when car parks are taken away or sold off. And so I urge you to put a hold on this uh, and retain the car park. Perhaps, you know, investigation into a multi-story car park at Tracy Street, which I felt, you know, may have needed to be investigated, uh, however, it's uh, a big if. Uh, would it be nice, and it should not not only to encourage the night economy, but also to encourage Hersel's micro economy. Um, councillors, isn't it best to find ways to compensate and find better car strategies before we potentially get rid of small business, small smaller car parks, which is being used during night and day? Uh, So I was going to say that the governments help small to medium businesses um, because they are the backbone of our, of our economy by taking away cars or car spaces and not adequately compensating or providing more parking to entice small people to come to Hurstville. We are punishing small business by taking car spaces away. So I urge you to vote uh, for this amendment uh, for all those businesses in the Hurstville CBD. Um, thank you, councillors. I hope you can uh, support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Castanius. I'm just listening to Councillor Castanius. I was hoping you might accept an amendment 
to that. Um, yeah, which I'm, I'll just word as we go. Um, and that is that we actually send this back to the council staff to actually look at being able to provide additional parking options uh, within this plan, because as you mentioned, and I don't wish to speak, but I'm just, no. yeah, uh, as, as you mentioned this, you know, it'd be good to be able to provide some, you know, beautification of that area to attract people. But if we can uh, get some uh, additional parking there as well, uh, I've met with the business owners, as I'm sure many of uh, council uh, councillors have done. I've met with representatives and uh, that is their concern. So I'm just looking if uh, rather than just move away from that, I think if we can retain some um, uh, of the beautification program, uh, because we want to um, lift that area sure. to a support small business because I think that's important. And, and obviously you being a, a, yeah. a Chivas Hill uh, business owner, well, you know what the, the beautification around there has done in that car park. So I, would you I accept the amendment? Business, I agree with the beautification, you know. Yeah, so, we can, nice so, we set, so, yeah, yeah, so my amendment would be to send it back and see if we can come back with some additional car parking options. Are you happy to accept that as an amendment? Uh, did you want to put that as a C or? Um, no, we'll just put no, well, that because that we are saying we don't do what you're asking. Just let them go back and go look at it. Let's come back and then come back with a with a further report. So we're not. Yeah, sorry. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The whole intention was, yeah, yeah, that's very important. We need to reach out. I would, I would take a month or two months, yeah. Well, well, no, let's, no let's, let's make sure we look at the options because we, we need to. Yeah, but as I say, this is hmm. you know, a beautification strategy as well. I mean, we, we want to, as I say, I think we want to improve that area. And certainly the conversations I had with the, the business representative, uh, he was all for. Uh, for that improvement. We can beautify as long as we retain. Uh, what is God trying to say? Uh, it's never stopped. That's very important. Yep. Yeah. And it's still, we're going to come back to council with that. Are we happy with that? So, are you happy with the that amendment? That's what um, we, I mean. That's. Oh, it, sorry. I think it's going to be read it out, please. Yeah, that, I'll read it. Uh, that the matter be deferred to enable staff to redesign the Palm, Palm Court car park to explore options that provide additional car parking spaces and or set down areas uh, within the current design. And obviously that will then come back to council. Well, is it, is as I say, retaining the existing uh, car spaces? As I say, we don't know. We're going to look at options. It's a bit of both. That's the point. Yeah. I'm trying to... I know this motion was... Sorry. I know this motion is there, but if someone read car park and set down the areas. If we go for set down the areas, yeah, it's fine, you know, just drop people come on and off. But it doesn't talk about a parking. So we want to make it sure does, it does. Enough, but we want to make sure it, it of course. It and say, the of course, and that's what's going to come back to councillors to make a decision. Um if if we don't like it when it comes back. We don't like it at the moment. We're we're just looking at further options. That's all. And as Councillor Castanius has said, we want to. We, sorry. That's access and egress. It's not. That's access and egress. It's just, as I say, this is looking at trying to keep some of the beautification. And we're trying to find a medium ground here. Yeah. Not necessarily. Well, if you don't like it when it comes back in a month or two, and if there's not enough parking, that's when you say. If you, if you don't, if you, sorry, if you, sorry, I, I'm not going to accept the amendment. Okay, James. Is there someone else wishes to uh, second the amendment? I'll second the amendment. I'll second the amendment. Is that Mr. Councillor? Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Elmi. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Elmi. As I say, um, I, I don't wish to speak any more to it. I'm just trying to come to a, a reasonable on that, if you don't mind. Or Certainly. Mr. Mayor, I, I think the amendment is reasonable. The only thing we're concerned about is that we're going to redesign the, the car park itself. I mean, you can redesign whichever way you want. We're going to lose parking spaces. There's one thing you're going to look at, first of all, 
and it's very important. Cogra has a big commuter parking. Hearst were meant to be our CBD, meant to be the regional centre of the south, and we don't have a commuter parking anywhere. That's number one. I know we're talking about commuter parking. So we're talking about, in Miss Weatherly's report, Miss Weatherly's report, uh, emailed to us that we might be able to catch the transport and come in and do all that. Well, uh, there's nowhere to park. If people want to go to catch a train from Hurstville, there's nowhere to park. That's why they go to Beverly Hills and they go to Cogra and they go to Pendus where they can park. There's nowhere to park here to be able to catch a train. That's number one. So if we're trying to promote transport, I don't think we're promoting that much transport in here. No one can catch it. So you've got to get people to drop you off. The other thing is we talked about New York, how they've got a, a plaza. They've opened the thing in Times Square and the people walking. That is terrific. I understand that, but it is terrific. And I've said that, close Forest Road and allow it to be uh, like Pitt Street, so people can walk through and all that. You can't have a little pocket park in there and have cars zooming around Forest Road. I can't see people are going to be sitting there with, with cars around them. If you close the whole thing, if that's the intention, that is different design there. Then we're talking a different design, closing Forest Road, allow all the traffic to go through Queens Road and bypass first which some people don't like because you're taking away some of the business, but others will say, what a great thing to be, be able to walk in there like Pitt Street, All right? So that's the sort of thing. The question again, there's no alternate parking. You take some parking, you've got to put some in there. They've got to be around the vicinity of that. The email from Mr. Wizardly says, 75% of men park in there, but 95% of women actually do shopping. Well, oh, 75 percent well, I walked to Westfield and I didn't see 95% or 85% of women there. I saw roughly 50-50. So how can there be 85 women do the shopping? Sorry, I'll read it. So if you think, I'm, let me quote it because I'd like to quote it. This is important. So I don't misquote people because there is nothing worse than misquoting people. And I agree. Thank you, uh, Ms. Conley, for that. Ms. Conley, for that. Uh, it says here, this clearly, and I just want to get it right because I don't like misquoting people and it's, it's not really nice when you do that. Finally, there are a number of council-owned car parks, which is 60 days spent occupancy. There are also many one hour and one fifteen minute uh, things. I'm just trying to find the place that I said. Okay, another interesting insight from the parking study undertaken by council is that the 65% of users of the car park were men, and this rose to 75% on the weekend. 75% are men. Yet it is women that have the highest retail expenditure. Really? In, well, I spend more than my wife, so she can't possibly. In some location, this is as high as 85% of the expenditure and women influence as much as 95%. Not a problem. But when I walk in Westfield, I don't see 95% in there of women influence in that. I see virtually the same men and women in there. I haven't seen 95%. That's basically what it's saying. Right? So 85% of women. If small businesses want to be successful, then you need to cater for women, safety and all that. Sorry? We all, a, lot, a lot of men do shopping for their, for, their, for their women's groceries, a lot of stuff is done by them. Then it says here, because you're only dropping in half an hour here and there into this little car park, well, it's not really business. Well, it is. It's business for the small people here. That's the whole aim. Otherwise, that's why it's only one hour parking. If you gave them three hour parking, they'll park there for three hours and they'll get business for you. But it's not a three hour parking. It's only probably, I think, it's half an hour or an hour parking. So, one hour. So we can't say people are parking there because it takes half an hour to an hour. Well, of course it is. So they need to do that. So that's the whole aim. I appreciate what Ms. Gondi was, uh, Ms. Weatherly was trying to say here, but all I'm trying to get at is uh, a car park is a car park. And it's, it's like Pinsers, like Mortal, those local little villages. That's why they have one hour parking in front of the shops. Half an hour is for you to be able to drop in, pick up what you want and come out. It's not for everyday shopping. And the CBD of first is not for three hours shopping, nothing. It's not just for three hours shopping. You may go and see your doctor. You could only be 45 minutes. You may go and see the chemist. You could only be half an hour. I don't need three hour parking. That's all I'm saying that that sort of parking is required. If we can find an alternate parking solution for it, somewhere that would help those things. But I'm gonna mention also something that we may, and that's still confidential, so we may lose some, a big amount of parking. We may in personal CBD. We haven't decided it, or well, we may. And if we do, it's even worse for the businesses. If, if others are not. So any parking spaces is very important and to every business. 
So all we're trying to say, if we file an alternate, that's fine. But if we now file the alternate, it's not, it's not right. Thank you. I think that was against the amendment. Okay. So does anyone wish to speak for the amendment? Can I ask a quick question? You can ask a question, sir. Mr. Mayor, through to you, um, Ms. Sue Weatherly. The survey that was conducted for the Palm Court um, usage or demand for the Palm Court car park, can you let me, can you tell me what times that was conducted? Whether it's during the day, was it during the night? Yes, the survey was conducted over a selected period of eight days in November, including weekends during the day and early evenings. It wasn't done until um, late at night, but so we're surveying the people um, using um, the car park, working out where they were coming from, where they were intending to go to, how long they were intending to stay, and identifying the drivers of the vehicles by age um, and gender. And that was presented to the committee together with the submissions as well as that were made to the um, to the exhibition of the design. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that. I just wanted to say, Mr. Mayor, that I feel that uh, a longer period during the night, because I mean, unless you don't drive, I wonder how many of the councillors have ever used that car park, you know, like a majority of us. And it's got a long history there and it's very convenient for everyone to park. Uh, unless there is a replacement car park, which was in the first place, it sounded like a great idea. The concept is great, but in reality, it impacts small business and we should encourage and help small business, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors. All right, any other comments? Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question? And then Councillor Symington after that. Councillor Teague? Oh, I was going to speak in for the motion, but I thought Councillor Symington, she, she got in first. Councillor no, Simington, you you've got the floor. Okay, um, look, I'm quite conflicted here, but unfortunately I'm gonna talk against the amendment. Um, I come from a small business background and you can't quantify, like say that you can't say it's a one hour parking or a half an hour parking. I had a business that was impacted because we had a, a parking area close to us in South Hurstville. It was an RSL. And because of people were misusing it at night time, bollards were put up. And um, that parking was not available to us between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. And people came and just stopped off for 10 minutes. They contributed a lot to our economic, economic viability. And we lost about a third of our revenue when those bollards went up. So I don't think you can say, oh, these people are just stopping for an, a half an hour and not contributing to the, um, you know, the, the economic um, benefit of the Hurstville precinct. I am walking in the shoes of those small business owners and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm low. I mean, I, I'm, I'm for green space and I, I believe we need to have it, but I'm low to do this to these small business owners in coming out of the pandemic, which I'm glad I don't have a small business now. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't accept the amendment. If it means that we're not going to get a, a proper solution, we're not going to help these people. I mean, if there was, if Forest Road was closed and then we're going to have that little you know, area there. I get it. That's like a vision. But if we're not, not going to close Forest Road and then we're just going to have like this area at the end, to me, that's not, a, it's not in total. It's not a total vision. So anyway, so that's my opinion. Councillor Teague. Uh, Kevin, could I ask that we could get the motion put large on the screen for those of us at home? Um, my, simply because I think what this motion, this amendment's doing, if I'm not at all mistaken, is exactly what Councillor Symington was just asking for. We're asking the staff to go back and make it, it provide us with a summary of where some additional parking is going to come from so that these um, members, so that these businesses aren't unfairly um, why don't we have the, Why don't we have that in the amendment that doesn't disadvantage those local businesses? Well, Councillor Symington, if, if I may, um, the I fully appreciate the example that Councillor Symington just given, but what had happened at, in Councillor Symington's example is those parking spots were taken away and replaced with literally nothing. So people used to be able to park there and now it was just an empty space. What we're talking about here is replacing potentially um, car spots with council investing in something that it's going to attract people to come to the area. 
there are thousands of people and families who live in the apartments around that, like within walking distance of what we're trying to create here. So how many people are going to go and take the kids to play um, on a Thursday afternoon after school and then pop into the shops when otherwise they wouldn't have gone anywhere near the place? How many people are going to get are going to go to that area and stay in that area and then do some shopping because they're going there? Like we're not talking about simply taking this space and and replacing it with a bit of you know just some some black asphalt so that no one can do it. We're creating a space that's more people friendly, that attracts people to come to it who otherwise wouldn't have come to the area and encourages people to stay when they're in the area anyway. So what we're talking about here is a really different approach to part. Like we're not we're, we're simply not taking something away without giving something back. What we're doing, I mean, how many businesses do you think would love it? How many cafes and restaurants would love it if we went and put a little park and a little playground in front of their place so that all of a sudden you could get a coffee or you could get some takeaway and you could sit there and while the kids play? Like businesses across our entire LGA would love it if we do that for them. They would beg us to do it for them. I mean, how many more people do you think would come to Shivers Hill if instead of um, but if right next to the shops there, we put a lovely little playground that people could come to. People would drive there. People would walk there. People I'm would come to the business. area in order to use the new facility that council just created. We're not taking something away from these shop owners without replacing anything. We're talking about creating a new and inviting space that's going to create people. It's going to bring people to the area. We saw that with the with the pop up park that we created. So while I appreciate the concerns of of the businesses and they run businesses i don't so i'm not here to tell them what we're that, that they that i know more about their business than they do i don't that's not true but what i am saying is we are not replacing something with nothing we are creating a space that's pro people not anti-car there's still going to be places people can come and stop at palm court and there's plenty of other places near palm court where people can come and park their cars um, but what we are doing is creating a space that will bring people to the area. People who might have only been at the other end of um, of, of Hurstle but wanted to come down and bring their kids because they wanted to have a play. People who want to sit somewhere and eat their lunch. People who want to take a break from their shopping. We're not replacing something with nothing. And that's why um, the report highlights those things and, and talks about the benefits we get and that shopkeepers will get by created by creating this new space to bring people into. So I really encourage councillors to consider voting for the amendment. We're not, this amendment is not about tearing out the car park tonight. This is about going back to the staff saying, we've, we've all heard the concerns of businesses when it comes to parking, when it comes to what we, how we're going to redo this. I don't think we need to throw the baby out with the bathwater councillors. I don't think we need to vote no to this tonight. We need to say, look, we've listened to the councillors, but we still want to create some additional green space. We still want to reclaim some something that's been dominated by cars and give it back to our residents while we're also acknowledging the concern. So I think the amendment finds a good balance. If you don't like it when it comes back from staff, we can go vote no for it then. All we're asking in this amendment is to ask the staff to do a little bit more work to balance those needs. But let's not pretend that when we're taking something away and not giving something back in return, this is going to create a usable exciting and engaging space for our residents, particularly those with families surrounding the area. So I really do, do encourage you to vote for the amendment. Uh, Councillors, we've had two speakers for and two speakers against. Councillor Lansby, do you have... Yeah, we had two speakers for and two speakers against the amendment. Against the amendment. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I spoke for the... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, as I said, can we just, uh, so we can have two speakers for it. Sorry, Councillor Lansby, do you have a question? Only Councillor... Um, Councillor Simonton and Councillor Hindi spoke against the amendment. Councillor Teague spoke for the amendment. All right. So, sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Maxine. Um, I didn't actually have a question. I was going to, um, if I may, speak in support of the amendment and explain my reasons why. Oh, give me two seconds. I have Councillor Vatilati, if you wish to speak against it, the amendment. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I'm going to say what I was going to do, seeing as you wish to speak, so I want to be fair. I'll let Councillor Lansley speak for 
you can speak against, and then we'll put the put the motion. I'll put the amendment, sorry, and then we'll see where that goes. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of an issue with uh, microphone. Um, look, I have been really torn about this from the absolute get-go. At the committee meeting a couple of weeks ago, I spoke in support of it, even though um, I still was very conflicted after hearing from um, the licensee from the hotel, and we heard in public forum tonight from um, their representative of the shopkeepers who are very concerned of the impact that that's going to have on the business. The reason why I'm supporting this amendment is because otherwise I fear we might lose it and then the car park might go ahead regardless. I think we can come back with, come up with a better outcome for it. One of my, my concerns has also been with the fact that the Tracy Street car park I was under the um, misunderstanding that that was going to be redeveloped into some sort of multi-storey uh, car park. Obviously, I dreamt that. I, I'm wrong about that. I found out in the last couple of days. So therefore, there's going to be no extra spaces to take up those spots, the 22 odd spots that are in the Palm Court um, car park currently. And we've heard tonight from Councillor Castanius, Councillor Farmington, who are both small, have a small business background. They understand the importance of being able to stop for 10 minutes and run in and grab something. Councillor Hindi as well uh, alluded to the problems with parking in Hurstville. Um, we do have a major parking problem in Hurstville. I, for one, have not parked in this space for a very long time because it's always really busy. I think we could, there's elements of, of Councillor Castanius's amendment originally that uh, are very well worth investigating, such as the egress and access and egress from there. I think off Forest Road, it's a really dangerous uh, approach into it. I think it, it was a much better access when it was off the other street at the end of Tracy Street. Sorry, I can't remember the name of it. I, I think that we can come back with a better outcome. I wholeheartedly support that we need more breathing space and somewhere nice to sit, but I don't think I'm sort of fail to see that it's a really super exciting, wonderful outcome for our residents if they're driving through Hurstville and around and around and around and can't find anywhere to stop when they've got to duck in quickly to one of those shops and they go on elsewhere. That's the last thing that we want to be uh, creating in Hurstville no, or any of our LGA because of the, the problem of parking is universal. It's never going to go away. But there's serious issues at Cogra and I can tell you I have driven around Cogra lots a couple of times and not found anything and kept going. I don't want to see this happen at Hurstville as well. Um, that's been my real concern about taking this away and I think this is the default option. If we defer it, the staff to have another look at it maybe have another look at where those spaces could go within some sort of thing within Treacy Street or whatever. Um, it's a much better outcome than us losing it and going ahead with this possibly overdeveloped patch of green space that is really not going to be helpful to anybody. It's meant to be servicing in that immediate area. So um, in that very convoluted roundabout discussion that I've just had, which I apologise for because I hadn't formulated my thoughts very well, um, I think it's a better outcome if we do defer it so we can have another crack at it and get a better result than we might have now. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, sorry. Can I suggest a further amendment to yours? Just a slight. Sure. Only, only because yeah. I know that yeah, you know, right. um, this could help. Uh, and that is one question also. Um, can I add to your amendment uh, and that business and the, uh, the business owners are consulted in, in this? Absolutely. Yeah? So business owners consulted, um, and hopefully this can come back in April. Well, let's that, not that try it. Yeah, we're well, going to have the business owners consult. Obviously, come back as soon as possible. The, the question, yeah, the question I have to possibly someone who can maybe through the, to the general manager is: um, Is there additional parking being considered? I mean, you can you can say provide additional car parking spaces, but where is it? Can you can you well, tell me where we can well, as I was saying, find it? <laughs> we we're not going to find anything until we actually uh, do some invest. All I'm suggesting is, and I'm, I'm I don't want to read the, the whole debate. All I'm suggesting is we go away, we look at the uh, uh, the options. It comes back to council hopefully within the next two months mm -hmm. after some consultation with business, and then if you don't like it, 
you haven't you haven't lost anything. I know. In I that just time. feel that it's a bit of a stalling tactic because we won't well, find any parking, and these people yeah, but, will be but, but impacted but, by. Sorry, but there's houses. still a car park there. I know. And there's no funding to do this at the moment, anyway. Yes. Okay. Of course. Well, well then, as I say, you still get to make the decision. This is, okay. this is not Kevin Green making a decision. We'll come back to the whole council. So, are you happy to accept my original amendment? I am now. All right. So the business owner on any result, revised design. Okay. Which is added. councillors. Is anyone desperate to speak on this now that Councillor Castanius has? accepted that amendment because if not i'm happy to put the motion council no one all right i'll put the, uh, the 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 now amended amendment which has become the amendment okay i'll put that all in favor say aye, aye. against aye. aye anyone against declare it carried thank you okay we now move to the sorry next item on the agenda which the table of disclosure of uh, interest returns, Councillor Battalotti. Oh, did I miss one, did I? Oh, my, my apologies. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, the appointment of independent members for the Georgia Order and Risk Committee. I went to the wrong tab. My apologies. Does someone wish to move a motion in this regard? I'll, I'll move the motion, but just with a question. Why? Haven't we appointed the two new members of the committee? This is to appoint the chairman. No, no, Sorry, no, no. It's yeah. Point A is to appoint the chairman, and point B is to appoint two independent members. That's that's all incorporated in the motion. But why does that need to? Well, A. Why haven't we done it? Because we're doing it tonight. Yeah. And, and B. Why do we? Why does it have to come to council? The audit committee is an ongoing committee. Yeah, but they're, 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 yeah, because their 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 tenure is up, and that's why we're doing. It. The issue is on the 30th of June 20. Yeah, so we're. What I'm saying, what should have come to us, a list of names. Yeah. A list of names has come to us. That's only one, Stephen. No, no, sorry, no, sorry. No, just to clarify. The recommendation is that the one, um, for one of the better term, I can't think of anything else, rolling over member uh, stays as the chair, yeah. Yeah, stays as the chair and becomes the chair. Then we also, out of the five uh, applicants, we appoint two of those to make up members two and three. Were we given a list of applicants? It was in the confidential. Um, was it that their CVs and their applications were in? And I'm happy if you want to discuss those, we can move it to confidential. Oh, I haven't seen it. Well, sorry. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, I, I haven't seen it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Councillor Hindi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it looks like we've got the name of the um, recommendation for the name for the chairperson, Stephen Horn. And Councillor will appoint two independent members. I haven't read it yet, but are there names there or actually in confidential? They're in the confidential. But that, their names are not there. Yeah. So now I understand that. That is why I was concerned about the chairperson being appointed in public, not in confidential. Because what if council hypothetically says, no, we're not going to appoint this particular yeah. person? I, I, I take, I take and, that. And then we embarrass a person in public by not doing it. I, 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 take, I, I take that on board. Thank I was hoping to all goes confidential and then we thank you, that's all. I've got no issue with the person, I'm just saying. Do you, do we not move the whole thing to confidential? Well, that's fine, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll move that. Is everyone happy? I mean, I've got no issue with which one we're doing it, so. All right, yeah, I'll move it to confidential. All right, so second that we move to confidential? Because I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All right, someone second that. Someone hopefully recognise that voice. So I'll put that, uh, I'll put that motion on in favour of say aye. Against the clear of carry. Now, sorry. Yeah, we'll do that in confidential at the end of the meeting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's deferred to confidential. Yes, sorry, get my terminology right. I had someone rolling over earlier. So, okay, uh, Councillor Battalotti. Uh, 
Yep. I Sorry, you. I'll move CCL 017. Is there a second to that motion? Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Elmere. Put the motion on, folks. Hello. Right. Gets a pair of carry. Okay, uh, the next is the report on outstanding council resolutions. Uh, Councillor Battalardi. I'll move that, Mr. Mayor. It's been moved. There is a second up. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Elmere, any discussion? Put the motion on in favour, say aye. Against, declare it carried. Uh, next is the delegates to the National General Assembly of Local Government Conference. Councillor Badalati. Uh, I'm just debating whether I was an interest well, in this. But it's open to it's, everyone. It's open to everyone. It's open, it's open yeah. to everyone, yeah. Okay, I'll move CCL 019, Mr. Mayor. It's been seconded, Councillor Hindi. Any discussion, Councillors? Put the motion on in favour, say aye. Gets the cleric carried. Oh, sorry, we have to choose the voting delegate. Yeah, there is. Councillor Badalati. Gets been moved. Councillor Hindi. Seconded Councillor Lansbury that Councillor Badalati be the voting delegate. Put the motion on favour so I against the cleric carried. Then we move to notice of motion, I think. Have I missed anything? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, the first uh, the first notice of motion, which was deferred from the last meeting, stands in the name of Councillor Payne. Council yeah, sorry, Councillor Yes, Councillor Lansby seconded it. Councillor Payne, firstly, you were provided with the answer to the questions from Sydney Water. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this was deferred for a response from Sydney Water. Having received that information, I believe there's no need to change this motion, and I'm again asking support for it. For Sydney Water to remove this project page from their website immediately after commencing work appears to be inconsistent with their other projects still on view. There's also a clear inconsistency with Sydney Water and other utilities being allowed to carry out projects that normally require a development application. Council has provided a DA with the Cars Park pool demolition with required reports for a site which is part of the same land reclamation work carried out during the Great Depression. This site is a coastal estuary and acid sulphate soil. It's flood prone and contaminated with asbestos. An issue with Sydney Water policing their own projects is they've been prosecuted by the EPA and the Land and Environment Court for breaches nine times in the past two years and it has recently as last week. In that judgment, Justice Robson references Sydney Water's prior convictions. Therefore, we should all be asking why Sydney Water didn't know the site was contaminated with asbestos before they started their earthworks and why they stopped for asbestos remediation that was notified to start on Friday, Thursday, the 25th of February, to continue for a month before, as they said, work would recommence safely for residents and workers. Sydney Water then ignored their own notice and started work three days ahead of that date and have continued ever since. Sydney Water has provided no excuse for this. And also, I'd, I'd like to table for table their notice to residents. Uh, don't have it with me. We'll take it that you will, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. And a five page traffic engineers report obtained by residents and photographs that I took of the Sydney Water Open Day in March of 2018. I attended the Open Day. I was given permission to take those photographs so I could promote the community consultation period on Facebook. My photo photos show the plans that the community consultation was based on, which retains the parkland that's behind the residences, being perhaps the only indigenous area of land left that was beside the original creek bed. The plans show, like the earlier plan of management had speculated, for additional stormwater treatment. The next we saw was in the committee papers of June 2019, a single diagram of the proposal that accommodated a council request to include future stormwater harvesting potential, along with a path and swale to take up most of that parkland at council's expense. Within a couple of weeks at the start of July 2019, you can find in the internet that the designers had already submitted and received an award for this project based on that single diagram and an artist's impression. 
yet by September 2020, residents were still being denied any plans from Sydney Water under a Kipper request on the basis that that plan was only 50% complete. Currently, the earthworks are changing the contour of the land to match the design features. It may be possible to change the landscape further to accommodate more or all of the council suggested swale underground and retain grassland for open space recreation. At last month's meeting, the speakers, Mr. Hanson, Mr. Thompson and traffic engineer, Mr. McLaren also explained what was originally proposed as a pedestrian path has now become a three meter wide shared path for pedestrians, cyclists and maintenance vehicles running behind their homes in Johnston Avenue. And it transitions to a mammoth five meters wide at Bruce and Wren Street, where it now exits via Mr. and Mrs. Thompson's driveway at the rear of one Parkside Drive. The Thompsons acquired their own traffic report and provided it to council. It details 10 faults with the road safety report Sydney Water are using. The engineer's advice is to separate vehicle traffic from pedestrians and cyclists in accordance with the first concept plan of November 2019. In asking council to look at these issues with residents, bear in mind that the final plans are vastly different to those the community was initially commenting on and the final detailed plans were not released until a very late stage. Gannon's Park is 18 times the size of Parkside Reserve and it is not a reasonable comparison. So we ask for your support for this motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lansford, I think you seconded that motion. Am I on? I would like to speak again, if that's okay. Uh, I'm supporting Councillor Payer's motion because I wholeheartedly agree with uh, part one that we need to consider further modifications of the stormwater design, such as replacing the open swale with an underground installation. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I'd like to do it. The other thing I need to say, councillors, is um, at the last council meeting, unfortunately this was deferred because there was an open question as to whether or not a DA was required. Councillor Payer got the response to that to say that there wasn't. Um, I was pretty furious that night, but I can't tell you, my blood has been boiling ever since. Um, I walked past there several times a week uh, and as recently as last night. And um, obviously not a whole lot of work has happened in the last few days, but can I tell you by some miraculous coincidence of timing, when we had our last council meeting in February, the night before I walked past and this particular location had a couple of holes, was fenced off with a bit of bunting. I that was, we had our council meeting on the Monday where this was on the business paper, asking council to consider deferring it. On Wednesday, when I walked past it again, a mere two days later, it was like, uh, you could not believe it. It was, there were, it, there were trucks everywhere. There, were, there was blue stone that had been dropped for, for access for trucks into the area. The whole thing had been excavated. There were piles of soil everywhere. The bunting had even been changed in the last few days to, to sort of favour the contractor rather than Sydney Water. I was horrified at this amazing coincidence of timing that this project really kicked off the day that this matter was to be heard at council. Um, if I was cynical, I could be. I would have thought that maybe uh, this got moving so that it would be too far advanced for council to, to backtrack. But you know, fortunately, I'm not cynical. On my way back, uh, when I walked past and on my way back home, I happened to bump into a resident who was putting on his bin. We had a quick chat, and I said, "So, what's going on down the street? When did this start? Did this start on Monday?" And he said, "Oh, yeah." the trucks came in on Monday and had been working around the clock ever since. Now, personally, I find that outrageous that it sat there for months and months and months, just fenced off dead grass and a couple of holes here and there. But amazingly, as soon as there might be, uh, the, the residents were really um, finally aware of what was being proposed after months of being kept in the dark, that it just progressed at lightning speed. Um, I feel really negligent as a councillor. I feel I should have been more all, all over it. But again, I didn't know about it. The residents didn't know about it. There was an article published in the leader and Sydney Water responded to it by saying, we've been engaging with the local community for three years on the project. We have kept our customers informed each step of the way and sought feedback on the design on numerous occasions, including community information sessions, online surveys, newsletters and notifications. 
that's rubbish. That is absolute rubbish. The residents had very little idea of what was going on. And in fact, as at uh, in September 2020, they, they put in a giver request to see the plans. September 2020, that's only a few months ago. Uh, the request was denied by Sydney Water on the basis that the plan was only 50% complete. Uh, and amazingly, I have also been given a timeline by, we had we heard from three speakers as Councillor Payne mentioned, and we had three speakers, uh, immediate residents of um, Parkside, who spoke at our last council meeting. Our coded meeting practice prevents them from speaking again tonight, but they have provided me with a lot of information to support their position to say that they haven't had the community consultation, that in fact, it was initially presented to them in March 2018. The, the next notification was 18 months later when a final design concept was released. In April 2020, Sydney Water advised residents a project was expected to commence in June 2020. In September, as I said, 2020, they denied a request, a give request for access to the plans. And um, November 2020 and January 21, local residents were still chasing answers as to what was going on. I just think this is an outrageous situation that the people who are directly affected by this were completely kept out of the loop. Sydney Water has form, and I don't care who has a crack at me about that. They do. They have been hauled over the coals in the Land and Environment account, uh, Court on a number of occasions for uh, not doing the right thing by the community. And this, councillors, I, I put to you is another example of that. They have put forward with a project, which I'm going to say it again because I actually really like the sound of it, is an over-engineered over solution looking for a problem. There is probably a problem of overflow water there, but it certainly is not warranting a three metre wide road. And seriously, if anybody is aware of this, the small space of land we're talking about, it, it really is just a ridiculous overdevelopment of a, for, to resolve a problem that could easily be resolved with very low impact by putting a swale underground, not impacting on uh, the parkland, which was a really lovely piece of open space. And you can tell by either side with where the playing fields are, lovely green open space, which now is a construction zone full of water, of course, because of all of the rain. So it's going to be prolonged for even longer. So councillors, I would ask you to search inside your consciousness and I would ask you to seriously please support Councillor Payer's uh, deferred motion tonight because this will be an absolute travesty if it goes ahead on the scale that it is now. This is the sort of thing that people are going to say in, in five, ten years time, what were you guys thinking? Why would you develop something on this scale for something that really wasn't warranted on this scale? So, councillors, please think your position very carefully tonight and please support Councillor Payne's motion. Councillor Catrus. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, does anyone wish to speak against before I give Councillor Catrus who I assume wants to speak for? Councillor Catrus. Just a very quick uh, call because all the matters have been covered by Councillor Lansbury and Councillor Payer. Um, prior to going into hospital, Mr Mayor, I actually had lots of meetings, a number of meetings with Councillor Payer um, regarding this issue. In summary, and I'm only going to do a summary, and I think this is basically endorsing what Councillor Payer and Councillor uh, Lansbury have said in detail. The, the, what I got from all the meetings is that Sydney Water have not provided details in 2017 and as Councillor um, Lansbury indicated they really weren't given any details to probably earlier this year or even later than earlier this year. Um, Sydney Water basically ticked the boxes of what they think what they're supposed to do uh, by sending letters informing uh, informing them this is going to go ahead but the actual details are lacking. From what I understand all Yes, it is an over-engineered project. I would suggest that it's probably one of those award-winning environmental projects. I'd suggest that it, and I don't have problems with award-winning environmental projects, but when the um, award-winning environmental project is so over-engineered, and I've seen these types of what you might call water filtration systems, stormwater filtration systems, um, which includes wet land, which includes wet lands for um, detention, uh, ponds uh, and um, a type of 
uh, vegetation which is proposed makes uh, and the majority of park, the park inaccessible for recreational purposes. You might say, but there are green areas involved. Yes, there are green areas involved, but they've cut those green areas back to probably about 25% of the whole open area. And really, all now that the uh, residents have digested what the situation is, they've also digested the fact that no matter what happens, a state government authority or an infrastructure provider doesn't even have to actually provide a DA to the council, just like Council Lansbury indicated. Um, what they want is just what they want is just some sensibility to rain, an over-engineered project which, and for those that um, don't know what a swale is, a swale is basically an open air um, stormwater drain. It's open to the, and all they want is for that open air drain to get, be taken underground, it apparently only takes, from what um, the information I've been given, it only takes about 3% um, of the stormwater in the north, uh, I think it's north uh, eastern region of that park. The majority of the stormwater flows into the canal. So for 3%, for 3%, of the collection of stormwater from the northwest, we've got all these detention systems, um, uh, wetlands, etc. But um, I really think it's over. And all they're asking for is for that swale to be put underground. Is for that uh, the three metre wide driveway, if it's going to be shared, to be um, reinstated with, I suppose, something a lot more natural. Um, with regards to grasslands, etc., and they want a little bit more open, uh, open um, recreational area. It will, and I think you need to go and look at them for yourselves. The type of vegetation they're talking about is just um, uh, rather large plants of pointed grass, pointed uh, vegetation, which you cannot actually access. So I support the Council of Pays um, uh, motion based on the direct contact with the residents, and they are being fair and reasonable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Catrus. Uh, that is anyone speaking against it, so there's no need for a right of reply. Might I just clarify one point, Councillor Payne, and I'm happy to support your motion. Um, in talking about Gannon's Park, it is a lot larger, but that takes in the sporting fields up top where there's the equivalent of eight football fields and also the um, the dog walking area, which is down the off-leash dog area, should I say, uh, down the bottom part, the actual stormwater treatment section is the bit in the middle, which is still, from what I've seen, and I've been to the uh, parks I drive on three or four occasions in the last month to have a look. Um, so it is smaller than the Gannis Park, but it's not the 18 times. And it's certainly neither are as big as the more reserved ones that um, the Cogra councillors would be well aware of, or previous Cogra councillors, I should say. Um, so anyway, put the motion. All in favour of the motion, say aye. Against the cleric carry. Aye. Thank you. Uh, steps towards dementia-friendly George Tuber. Is there a seconder to Councillor Castanius, Councillor Symington? Thank you, Mr Seconded, Mayor. Mr Mayor. It's been seconded by Councillor Castanius. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Australia has approximately half a million people currently living with dementia, and in New South Wales there's an estimated 157,000 people with dementia. Dementia impacts memory, communication, mood and reasoning skills. Councillors, I'm sure you're all aware that there is currently no prevention or cure for dementia. And without a medical breakthrough, dementia is projected to increase to 345,000 people in New South Wales by 2058. Dementia doesn't just affect older people. About 28,000 people under the age of 65 have younger onset dementia. Older Australians are generally living longer as greater standards of living and better access to quality healthcare increases our overall life expectancy. Over 15% of the Australian population is 65 or older. While a longer life expectancy is a positive outcome and many older Australians are living well and independently in the community, there are many that require support services for mental and physical age-related health issues. 
people living with dementia make up approximately 50%, 52% of those in aged care facilities. It's the second leading cause of death and the single greatest cause of disability for older Australians. Almost 1.6 million people in Australia are involved in the care of someone diagnosed with dementia. Obviously, this is a serious issue and a growing problem that can potentially affect all of us. Last year, my mother, who is in Melbourne, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and is now in full-time care. Now, she lived, a, she lived a full life up until about 96, and you could say, yeah, that, that's great, but you know, the impact of that this last year has been horrendous. I can't put into words the, the fear I feel when I talk to her, waiting for her to, to forget who I am, um, just as she's forgotten all the major life events, like the death of my brother. Unless I pretend that he's still alive, she will relive that pain of his death over and over again. My aim is to make her feel safe and comfortable and travel with her to where she is in time. I know a major contributing factor to my mother's rapid decline while she was still living independently was the COVID-19 isolation and lockdowns. I could only visit her twice in a year and my siblings were severely restricted as well. I believe support programs that cultivate participation in social activities are vital and contribute to slowing the rate of deterioration amongst our communities. Dementia causes uh, confusion and fear and because simple things that we take for granted like how to open and close a door are lost. So something as simple as signs on a retail door saying push or pull would make things easier. Dementia friendly communities and recognition of their benefits are gaining momentum with international communities of different forms um, existing in the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Japan, Belgium, and in Australia, in areas such as Port Macquarie and Kayama, they've been exploring dementia-friendly principles since 2013 and have developed dementia-friendly community program. Local businesses have action plans to provide inclusive environments to all shoppers by ensuring dementia-friendly design, dementia training for all current and future employees and promoting dementia awareness annually. In a nutshell, Dementia Friendly Community is a place where those with dementia and their families and carers are understood, supported and able to actively function as part of that community. And that's what I envisage for our local government area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Symington. Uh, anyone wish to speak for the motion or against? Oh, sorry, anyone wish to speak for the motion? Councillor Catrice. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I will speak for him. I actually congratulate Councillor Simington on this. Um, when you've had, when you've actually had first-hand experience with regards to people that are close to you, and I won't speak for a long time, uh, close to you, um, you really do, you really are saddened by the whole situation, and the experience is very, um, I suppose. Uh, D depressing. Um, my father actually got dementia at the age of 67 um, and within a couple of years he had to be institutionalised. Within a couple of years, councillors, um, he couldn't re um, he couldn't recognise, no, uh, uh, couldn't recognise his own family, his own people um, and I think right towards the end, he actually passed away of bowel cancer, but right towards the end he was a, a complete vegetable. Something that I would hope very few people would have to go through. What I really do want to say is that um, what Councillor Simonton is saying, yes, there are a lot of places, especially in the UK and other areas where they are actually designing their buildings for people that are suffering um, uh, from dementia. And it, it, it look, simple things like, for instance, bold, bold colours on various retail outlets, bold colours that identify and differentiate between, let's say, a cake shop or a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a place that sells menswear or women's wear. Um, it, there, there are many things that can be done. Um, all you need to do is to actually go to a dementia-specific nursing home or aged care facility and you'll find that they've already adopted various types of initiatives to assist people with dementia, and there are townships, and I'm basically repeating what Councillor Simon has said, but there are townships in the UK that actually um, have been designed. And the other problem we've also got to look at 
have been designed for the purpose of assisting people with dementia, but the other people we've got to help too are the people that are the carers and the close partners of the people that are, um, I suppose, uh, suffering from dementia. It, it is a very frustrating experience. It's frustrating for the family when the person talks about something which um, it makes no sense at all. I think we need to give them some information and give them some uh, something that helps them in dealing with the matter because the most frustrating part of a situation where a person is dementing is when they are saying something which is nonsensical in our minds but sensical in their minds. There are times when there's anger, um, just the frustration, but anger being built up in the carer or the partner, just the partner. They need to be able to deal with these matters in a more understanding manner. But I do congratulate Councillor Symington on a very good motion with regards to dementia. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Okay. In putting the motion, might I say, uh, Councillor Symington, uh, the Director of Community Services, and I, about two years ago, I think we went to a seminar that uh, Three Bridges uh, conducted with regards to making uh, the community, um, for want of a better term, more dementia friendly. And it was very much along the lines, Councillor Symington, as you spoke so passionately tonight. And uh, uh, they had a number of community groups there. Um, and I think it was two years ago. And uh, certainly, um, Council indicated and will continue, hopefully, when we pass this motion, its commitment uh, to supporting not just those in the community, but also their carers. So I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Against, declare it carried. Uh, Councillor Lou, accolades for Council's In Good Taste Festival. Is there a second to this motion? Councillor. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Seconded, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Catrus, okay. Councillor Lou. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, on this matter. Um, we all know that um, 2020 is such a challenging and tough year, uh, even for councils, uh, different, um, uh, you know, uh, division of uh, staff and for the uh, communities. As well. So thinking about um, they are using different um, uh, ways of thinking and try to utilise in the universal theme of food and try to use these uh, very unique idea to um, connect the, the council and the local community. So that's why I wanted to uh, congratulate uh, this group of uh, staff under the leadership of um, that, I think, um, director of um, uh, community and uh, services, right? And I congratulate their, their, um, the, the very uh, outstanding work have been delivered to support is a program. Uh, especially, I understand um, it's called an In Good Taste Festival was delivered not only in the um, in the Herzl or the uh, the other centre. It really lies across our local government area, including Oatley, Navi, Herzl, Herzl Grove, Riverwood, and Corners Point. Um, under I pretty understand these um, uh, COVID concerns. Uh, a safe plan. So it, it really con uh, should be congratulated for this. And they also got a very positive, uh, I think, a media coverage from different uh, media platform. So that's why I wanted to um, move this motion and uh, try to congratulate uh, council staff and to deliver this uh, very special program and event. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lu. Does anyone wish to speak on this motion? No? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Just, just, just briefly, um, I just like to sort of just reflect, not specifically on these events, um, but just broadly on how well the council staff have done in such a challenging environment to really keep that these events running in the circumstances. I, I know, for example, we've spoken about it previously, but the um, the movie night that was had down in Connell's Point, I know, was very, very, very popular, um, and it's just a it's an absolute. Um, 
a boon to have such fantastic event staff working for council, um, coming up with such creative and interesting ideas. I mean, it's easy, I suppose, to roll out the same events every year and just kind of get a different dance troupe or a different musical act. Um, that's a lot easier, still not no walk in the park, but a lot easier than what they've been asked to do over these last 12 months. Um, and they've done a fantastic job under very trying circumstances, both personally, I mean, everyone's, you know, been doing two jobs over these last last year, just trying to keep everything together at home, with especially with kids. Um, but I just really want to make sure that we acknowledge what a fantastic job they've done for our community um, and, and, you know, on our behalf, I suppose, as, as councillors. Um, and they've done, I'm really impressed by what they've done. Um, these are just two other examples of the, crea the creativity that's within that team. And I think if anything, what we've probably learned is we can continue coming up with these small, creative, nimble ideas that don't, you know, sort of perhaps require the same planning as, you know, a giant Lunar New Year, not to say we shouldn't keep doing a giant Lunar New Year event, but perhaps we should try and schedule in and budget for a few smaller, um, you know, one-off events that we just kind of dip the toe in the water, see what works, um, and then build from there, and then, you know, find if things are particularly successful, we'll grow them from small events into big ones, you know. Anything we can do to get our community to come together, support local businesses, um, and get people out, get people, you know, enjoying our parks, enjoying our main streets, enjoying the community feel that we've got here, um, I think is a really important thing that we need to think of. So, um, again, a very, very big thank you um, to the director um, and all the staff. Um, and I think we should, if anything, be asking them to, to keep up this creative thinking uh, and finding more uh, ways we can do this, newer ideas, newer opportunities to really, um, you know, highlight and frame what it is that we do here really well in the Georges River. So um, a, a, a big tick and a, a, a big support for the motion from me. Thank you. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion all in favour of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Again, aye. declare it carried. Um, might I say, um, just looking at the director, I think the last of the Good Taste events coming up this Saturday night at Donnelly Reserve. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the, the final one of those um, Events and again, yeah, just it's called promotion. Okay, so now we move to the next motion, which stands in the name of Councillor Grecus. Is there a second to this motion? I'll second that, Mr. May. Councillor Teague, thank you, Councillor Grecus. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm hoping you can hear me okay. I've got new, uh, we can, on. we can. Okay, perfect. Um, look, as we're all aware, we dealt with this same motion three months ago, um, where initially council did the right thing and supported calling on those councillors who are under investigation by ICAC to stand aside. However, as we also know, it was then rescinded when certain councillors decided not to remove themselves from the chamber. Regardless of what happened in December, I still strongly hold the view that the reputation of Georges River Council has been adversely impacted and continues to be so because of the ongoing attendance at council meetings of these councillors when they, like all of us in the room, have been made aware that there is an active and ongoing ICAC investigation into them. As I was preparing my thoughts for this motion tonight, I asked myself, how can I convince those who voted against this motion in December to support it tonight? It really seems absurd to have to explain the merits of the argument again, but I'm happy to do so. Firstly, that two of our councillors have been under investigation by ICAC since November 2019, and that ICAC has confirmed that it is an active and ongoing investigation into these two councillors. Secondly, as we don't know the scope of the operation, we have no way of knowing whether these councillors have continued to vote, to vote on matters for which they are potentially under investigation. And third, as I said at the December meeting, it's obscenely inappropriate for councillors who are actively under investigation by ICAC and are aware of this to remain in the chamber because it erodes public confidence and trust in council's decision making. It may also be impeding an ongoing investigation. So on face value, if those very concerning facts aren't enough to convince councillors to support this motion, I have to ask myself what will. Ultimately, I keep coming back to the strongest argument in favour of calling on these two councillors who are under investigation by ICAC to stand aside. Simply because it is the right thing to do and we all know it's the right thing to do. All of you know how our community feels about this. They think it's absolutely disgraceful and rightly ask, how can councillors who are under investigation by ICAC 
continue to attend meetings, receive briefings, and vote on matters that may be relevant to the ICAC investigation. Residents point out that this would never be acceptable in private industry, that board members would absent themselves or be forced to absent themselves until the matter is finalized, even if merely to avoid the perception of impropriety. I want to stress that this is, this is not personal and it's not about preemptively determining guilt. This is about ensuring public confidence and honor in Georges River Council and its decision-making process. Put simply, this is about integrity. Just like board members in the private sector, we need to call on those councillors under investigation to stand aside, to show our community that Georges River Council believes in good governance, transparency, and accountability. And we will not abide even the slightest hint or allegation of corruption. To those of you who hide behind the defense of proper process, I say to you, the onus is on you to explain how proper process has not been followed in this case. As I mentioned before, we are not determining guilt. That is not our job. It's ICACs. And based on what's happened recently in Canterbury Council, I'm confident that they will do their job exceedingly well. I am merely calling on those councillors to stand aside until they have been cleared of any wrongdoing, so as to avoid any accusation of impropriety. It's not just an issue of propriety and good, government, go, good governance, it's one of costs as well. This matter has already cost our ratepayers $1.3 million in legal bills and future costs are an unknown. I admit that stepping aside won't change this cost, but it will at least be an acknowledgement of the gravity of this situation, something that has been sadly missing by many of our counselors. Regardless of how this vote goes tonight, I know that as a council, we did the right thing back in April 2019, and we confirmed to the public that we won't tolerate allegations of corruption. We took them seriously and proactively referred them to the appropriate investigative body. So to sum up, I'll put it very simply. While these two councillors remain in the chamber and continue to vote, it is an ethical albatross around all of our necks. Nothing has changed in the past three months. Every decision is a potential conflict of interest. Every decision is potentially the subject of an ICAC investigation. Every decision is potentially tainted. An ICAC investigation is a very serious matter, and ICAC has confirmed that it is investigating these two councillors. We cannot let the actions of two of our councillors mar the rest of the organization and undermine the good work it's doing. This is a massive issue for our community. And I think many of our councillors are vastly underestimating how closely our residents are following this and are misunderstanding their expectations of us. So long as we have councillors who are actively under investigation, remain in this chamber and I mean, continue to make decisions, yeah. our residents, I'm, I'm finishing yeah. up. Yeah, finish now, thank you. Finish our up. business community and indeed even our own staff members will have no confidence in the integrity of the decisions we make. So in conclusion, so that our community can continue to have confidence in the integrity of this council, and so that the community knows we are taking this as seriously as it deserves to be taken, I ask that you support this motion and that the cur councillors currently under investigation by ICAC stand aside until the investigation is finalised. Um, this is second I wish to speak to the motion. I'll reserve my right for the moment, Mr Mayor. Is anyone wish to speak against the motion? Councillor Thank you. Thank you to Councillor Grekis, and uh, she has every right to put any motion through, uh, as we talked about due process and so on. So the question becomes is, it's very, um, I'm just going to not respond to what Councillor Grekis, because she's entitled to her opinion. The first question I'll be asking is, our names are not mentioned in the motion, which I appreciate that Councillor Grekis, because as the LG said, can't mention people's names. Yet the director's comments mention the councillor's names and make allegations. Now, when we tried to put a notice of motion against Council Lou, I was told by the general manager and the legal people and the LG and the world that you can't mention names, even though it's clearly out in the paper, in the public, out in the public. So we didn't mention the name. We just, you know, yet in here, Council Brickers did the right thing, didn't mention the names. Yet the director's comment says, let's mention the names. Now, 
I don't understand. That's making an allegation that's again contrary to the code by putting people's names in there. It says people's names are not meant to be there. You're not to make allegations about people. Whether it is true, not true, whether it's in the paper or not in the paper. So that's that's number one. So other than trying to put it out in the open and keep it going by the GM, I don't see why would the names be there. But Councillor Hendy, yes, I think you should withdraw that. I will not withdraw that. And I'll Councillor Hendy. I'm happy to go for defamation. Councillor Hendy. Hendy for defamation. Councillor Hendy, yes. I'm asking you to withdraw Sorry, okay. that. Whose comment was Councillor that? Hendy. Before I do that, I'd like to know who's, who's the director's comment. Who made that comment? Who's directed? Who's put our name yeah, in the, the, I'll, I'll have that question answered, but I'd ask you to take I'll withdraw about the general Thank you. Until I find out the name. Okay, yeah, I'll withdraw. Yeah. So who, who's the name of the director? Mr Mayor. They are my comments that are shown as the director's comments in this notice motion. Thank you. All right. So if every other councillor has no right to mention his people's name, the general manager under the same code of conduct as every other uh, councillor, so I don't understand why the names are put in there. Even though it's in the public, there's a lot of allegations about a councillor that was out in the public and the name was not allowed to be mentioned, even though it's a whole newspaper article, three or it was not allowed to be mentioned. Why? Because you can't make allegations about people in public. And that's exactly what it's doing. That's fine. Anyway, we'll put that aside. Now, you know, we're talking about councillors should voluntarily stand aside. I can look at the history of the Labor Party and the Liberal Party of some MPs and it was put aside. They might have resigned from the party, they might have been on the cross bench, they might have been resigned as a minister, as a premier, but they have not stepped out and they still both in parliament until you're found guilty. As we can see with the Canterbury outcome today, there are some people who have been accused of certain things and they haven't been, had nothing to answer. So not everyone that gets investigated by that is going to have something to answer. Right? That's very clear. However, if we look at the Canterbury thing today that came out, or like it says, the reason people were found to be corrupt because they didn't declare interest. I can mention two people here that didn't declare interest when they should have. One is about the Beverly Park Golf Course, took twice, be careful there, mates, I am being careful, and one that was the vice president of the San Susie pool that did not declare interest and gave a million point of Councillor Hindley. Yes. Those point of order, point of order, yeah, Councillor covering he this. knows that is not Councillor Hindi, yes. do not make spurious claims. They're not spurious, they are facts. Councillor Hindi, I've got the facts. Yeah, well, when you present, you can't allege, you can't make allegations. I can because yeah. I expected you to have section 11. Uh, to, to Councillor, Councillor Hindi, yes, just speak to the motion. Thank you. I am, because we're doing a comparison here. So let me just go to the next one. It's the person that's moving the motion. That is a voice on YouTube now that says a school teacher and a, and a Georgia River councillor chucks a tantrum. That's on YouTube. People can hear it if they have to. And it basically says, This is a disgrace. This is an F disgrace. This is a person that wants accountability and all that. The person that actually teaches school kids how to behave. Councillor Hindi. Yes. Point of order. No, 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 thank you. I've got, this, I've got this covered. Councillor Hindi, you know you are going well outside the code of meeting practice. Well, no, you are going well, well out, people Councillor Hindi, yes. thank you, you are going well outside and you, you give yourself, you do yourself no credit in doing so. Tie yourself to the motion Please. and stick within the, the principles of the meeting. Thank you. So the general manager's comments, not the director's comments, the general manager's comment in response to council resolution of the 23rd of April, the allegations published in the Sydney Morning Herald in April 2019 were referred to ICAC. Is that true? Or was it subsequent to a section 11 on the 19th of March that you sent to ICAC? Councillor Hindi, it is a fact. We got it. It's a fact. I'm not, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. Yes. Council, it is a fact. Councillor Hindi, yes, I'm going to make a look. Yes. yes, I'm just suggesting yes. that you be very careful. No, because that's no, incorrect. No, no, that's incorrect. I'm just saying you should be very careful. It is incorrect. Councillor, yes. Councillor Hindi, 
I'm suggesting you be very careful in your references to ICAC you. and their inquiries. Now, I know ICAC's requirements. I know exactly what the requirements are. I've read so many reports. I know the requirements. The question becomes here, council has been, in the past, been trying to find out who is the whistleblower, who is actually leaking information to the media. Who's been leaking it? It's such an important thing to against the code of conduct. But somebody leaked information to the media in February and March of 2019. Someone from here leaked the information to the media, and I have the evidence in my hand. The person that referred Section 11 to ITAC is the person that leaked the information to the media. And I will make that allegation, and I'm happy to be sued. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Point of order, Councillor Tim. 11D of the Code of Medical. Yes, I'm happy. Councillor Hindi, I'm giving you one more warning, oh. and then, and then, if you go outside the bounds again, I'm I'll, not. I'll, if you go outside the bounds again, you will be asked to stop speaking. Okay. And that's the so you're right on the edge. I am. So the 23rd of April is not correct. It is one of them. The 19th of March, the section 11 of 19th of March, was what referred to. Okay, and the 23rd of April. But the 19th of March, the newspaper was given the information by someone from George's River Council to write the report on the 2nd of April. And I will make Absolutely. this allegation. I will make the allegation, and I'm happy to be sued for defamation because I've got the facts in my hand. Councillor Hindi, Councillor Hindi, while you may be happy to be sued for defamation, which is a very strange comment to make, I might add, that you actually admitting it may be defaming because somebody. I'm, because now, if you're not wrong, Councillor Hindi, wrong, I've right. got the floor and you know it. Thank you. So, yeah. Right? As I said, while you may be prepared to say that you are making defamatory comments about somebody, I'm suggesting, no, I'm saying to you, I won't okay. allow you to do that. Okay. You I'll cannot make allegations in this forum. Yeah. If you want to make them in another forum, so be it. You're right. But you can't also. No, I'm right. So you let's... can't also allow other people to use our names. No. Councillor, Councillor Hindi, that's on the record. Do you wish to finish? In making so, of comments. One last comment. All I'm asking councillors is it is up to the individuals. Council directors made it clear she was not aware of what the investigation is about. It's clear you just mentioned the 23rd of April. If that's what's in the paper that we went to China and we got a free a free drinks, well, you know what it is. But there's no trip to China, there's no boat on those pr uh, properties. So, what is there that is going to be? If there's something else that's different, but that's what's been written there. So instead of saying, oh, they could be voted on this, it will tarnish this, it will taint this, it will taint that, maybe people that actually voted on the sensitivity pool for a million dollars would have tarnished that too by being the VP. I rest my case. Yes. Um, is there anyone wishes to speak for the motion? Uh, Mr. Anyone? Mayor, I'll, I'll use my right to speak now, if that's all right. Certainly. Uh, look, I won't take too much of the council's time and I'll attempt not to breach the code of meeting practice on seven or eight occasions while doing so. Um, the councillors, this this is a motion we supported last year because it was the right thing to do when we supported it. Um, the, the, the question that someone could be speaking here, voting here and participating in debate at council while under such a serious allegation as I mentioned last time round, it is an allegation that the Australian Labor Party takes sufficiently seriously that simply being under investigation by a public authority is grounds to have your membership suspended. Um, Councillor Hindi alluded Point to... Point of order. Uh, Point of order, Mr Mayor. Point of order. Being suspended from a party does not mean you've accrued yourself from both. That's not the point of it, I but yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. What I missed for me. Councillor Bellotti. You just recently said that Councillor Hindi had to keep yeah. to the motion. Exactly. Councillor Teague is Councillor Teague. outside of that. Thank Councillor Teague. Oh. Make sure you stay to the motion. Thank you. Sure thing, Mr Mayor. Um, now, councillors, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Um, you're not... The question here isn't whether or not you're going to walk past the standard. The question here is whether you're going to set it. You, you can't stand by. Um, you, you're not just walking past something you see in the street. You are a decision maker as to the standard that you accept of this council. 
we are either a council that thinks that an ICAC investigation is sufficiently serious to warrant this question, or it isn't. Now, I know where I stand on that. I'm not neutral on the topic. Um, I think it is clear and unequivocal that someone who is the subject of an ICAC investigation, um, where that is known and public and known to that councillor, um, they have no choice, but to, in my view, but to step aside for the, because that's, of course, that's what we should do. Of course, that's the standard we should expect of ourselves and our fellow councillors. And I think there is absolutely no question that if you went down to Penshurst, Mortdale, Southhurstville, Cogra, Nawi, Blakehurst, um, Kingsgrove, Beverly Hills, you went to any of those main streets and put a microphone in someone's face and said, do you think one of your councillors who is under ICAC investigation should be participating in council meetings and voting? I don't think the result would be close, councillors. I think you'd be struggling to find one resident who thought that it was a fair thing. So all I'm asking us to do is uphold the standard to which our community already expects us to be held to. And I, as Councillor Greg, I agree with Councillor Gregus, would be shocked to find out that we do not. We're not here to pass innocence or guilt. That is definitely not out of question. The question here is a question of governance and a question of standards. Do we take this seriously or do we not? And I know where I stand. I encourage you to vote for the motion. Councillor Ainsbury. I just had a quick question. Oh no, sorry, you, 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 your, your thing came up and then Councillor Castanius came up under that, sorry. Uh, just, I was going to Oh, sorry, my apologies. Okay. Just, oh, oh, sorry, Councillor. I'll, I'll just ask a quick question. If you uh, yeah, happy to. Do you want to speak now? Okay. Uh, Councillor Badalati, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I found it very interesting that Councillor Greckers said that it was nothing personal. Nothing personal. And yet, when her neighbour's fence was graffiti, Councillor Greckers sent two detectives round to my place. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Point of order, Mr. Point of order. Point of order. Councillor, this is this is ridiculous. No, Councillor, no, it's true. Councillor Gregus, I think what you really want to say is that you are not the police commissioner, and you in no, and in no way could allocate police resources to anywhere. Councillor, and no, they told us. No, I don't think they were directed. Like, Mr. Mayor, I'd ask the comment to be withdrawn. No, well, not no, because they came to my place, Councillor Ted. I'm not asking you to withdraw no. whether they're at your house or not. I'm asking you to withdraw the statement that Councillor Greg has directed them to be there. She didn't direct them. She Thank asked you. them. She told them she thought it was me. Yes. Or if, if I got somebody to do it. That is what the detectives said, Councillor Greckers. So don't give me any... Councillor Badalati. No, back to, Mayor, back to the enough. point. I've had enough of the click that operates in this Green place. The, the click that operates in this place. But, Mr. Mayor, I think I'm a fairly fair person. If Councillor Greckers is really serious about reporting things, she might look at a property on Forest Road that is being built at the moment by a company called Fruit Corp. Now, Fruit Corp, under the administration, was given an extra 200 odd units. 200 units, and the VPA they paid was $1 million. And when it went to the Southern Sydney planning panel and they were told that the VPA was $1 million for 200 units, they all laughed. And Councillor Badalati, I'm just trying to work out. Councillor Badalati, Councillor Hindi. I'm talking about I, things that are happening no, here. Yeah, could you and just talk Councillor, about the mayor motion? Yes, no, Councillor no. Greckers can do something on this. If she is the paragon of virtue for this place that she makes out, well, 
I'm giving her some things she can report. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Point of order. Councillor, Councillor Griggs. That, that's ridiculous. I've asked him to withdraw that statement. I have never made myself out to be the paragon. Oh, you have. He, Councillor, no. Councillor Badalati, I think you should withdraw that comment. Why? It's not really. Why? It's because, as you know, it's not what it said, it's how it said that makes a difference. Oh, yeah, but thank you. Thank you. I'll withdraw. Thank you. The same now, move, move forward. Move forward. Yes, it's the same councillor that yeah, shows her loyalty to different things. When she became an Australian citizen, shortly after, she said to a group of people, me including, she would give up her Australian citizenship before her American citizenship. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, are they actually Chancellor, going to address Chancellor any Bellamy. of the issues? This is ridiculous. That is, yeah, Councillor Badalati, you're on your last chance and you should turn your microphone on. Um, I ask that these, oh. these points be uh, withdrawn by, by Councillor Badalati. This, this is just ridiculous. Yeah, Councillor Badalati, you can't use, you know, just move on, move on, move on. Just showing yeah, what kind of person. Okay, Mr. Mayor. At the last council meeting, I asked for a breakup of the $1.3 million, one moment, this relate, it's, in, it's in the report, right? $1.3 million that's been spent by council. Spent by council when council's not involved in this ITAC investigation. I asked for a breakup and I was told that ITAC was allowed. Correct. Allowed in what way? Correct. And you know I'm not going to answer that question uh, anymore. Yeah, that's fine. I gave that's fine. That's Thank that's you. Okay. You can't talk about ITAC. You can talk about ITAC here. So we can't know the breakup of the $1.3 million. Now, because council's not being investigated, I assume it's all gone on legal fees that council's protecting their reputation on. Now, I just find it incredible that all that money has been spent with another 600,000 being full cut. This is just to put us down. A total of two million dollars yeah, being yeah. spent by council for what? What do you care? Let us be things. doesn't matter. Anyway, councillors, this motion is just a personal attack it's to keep point of order, Mr. Mayor. That's Ms. Councillor Badalati has to withdraw that. Yeah, Councillor Badalati, it's, you can't actually use that term, and you know that. Just you know, just oh, no. Just, just can we just bring this to a close, Councillor Badalati? Continue. Anyway, I believe it's a personal attack, and Mr. Mayor, um, you've got to withdraw that statement. Yeah, you can't get, Mr. Mayor, I draw your attention yeah, to the, it is kind of the causes practice. for expulsion yeah. from the meeting under the code of meeting practice for continued disorderly conduct. Yeah, I think you're yeah. Part. Now, really Councillor Badalati, Councillor Badalati, can you just be very careful in the terms you use and and who who you impugn? Thank you. Who are you choose? Impugned. Impugned. It's okay for us to be impugned all the time. That's okay. But, Mr. Mayor, I know who's been behind all this. It's okay. It'll all come out. Don't worry. But, councillors, it's obvious the Sydney Morning Herald needs another story. So, this has been put up. So, 
I ask that you use your conscience on this and uh, vote accordingly. Does anyone wish to speak? Question. Just a comment. No. Question. Question. We don't have your comment. Okay. Did the police come to my house? Yes. Did they say Councillor? I'm, I'm just going to. Is, did is, Sandy, is, did Councillor is, Greggers tell me? Councillor I think it's Councillor Hindi. Someone? Yes. They told me. Councillor Hindi. Thank, thank you. This, thank you. Yeah, you know, I've just called that to order. No, just, now, just now Councillor, I'm oh, sorry. Councillor from uh, Lansbury, are you speaking for the motion? Is there someone speaking for the motion before I move to someone speaking against? Councillor Lansbury. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Well, where do I start? Um, I really didn't want to give this uh, another crack at this motion any more oxygen tonight. Unfortunately, it's on the business paper again, and I guess as, as surely as the sun rises in the east, you can imagine as soon as that three-month period is up, there'll be another crack at Councillor Vadalati and Councillor Hindi. Um, they haven't exactly covered themselves in a whole lot of glory tonight. However, um, I'm going to be sticking my neck out again because I really believe in due process and I really do believe that it is a personal attack on these two guys. I'm not going to withdraw that. Mr. Mayor, the councillor needs to withdraw that. Uh, councillor Lansbury, you know that you can't say that. Well, Please, I, no, I just look, councillor Lansbury, I'm, ha I'm happy to let you speak. That's okay, but. You know, you've, you're a very experienced councillor, right? So could you just please, as you've made comment previously about other comments, can we just keep within the bounds of the meeting practice and make your points, okay? And I prefaced it by saying that I do believe that, and I honestly do believe Mr. Mayor, that. She needs, um, the councillor Lansbury needs to withdraw that statement. Councillor Tegg, I think you need to just sit quietly for a moment and let me speak. Uh, councillor Lansbury, it needs to be under. There's a point of order. All that Councillor Tegg is saying is that you should consider withdrawing that comment. Okay, now, so, okay I'll withdraw it. Thank so you. Now, you're I'll welcome to the floor. It. Thank you. Um, it doesn't mean I don't believe it, though. Anyway, um, I just think here we are again. Councillor Greg has said that the reputation of council is suffering by the damage um, of having these two councillors remaining on council and not standing aside. Well, I contend that the council's reputation is suffering by this sort of nonsense. And here we are looking at each other again, fighting amongst ourselves. These two characters on the other side of the chamber have been under an unholy amount of pressure during this whole council term. And anybody who has been observing this is well aware of it. And I guarantee if you took Councillor Tegg's microphone to any part of those parts of the LGA that he mentioned and asked them what they thought, that they would agree with me. They don't believe that this has been handled even handedly. And yes, here I am again, sticking my neck out for these two, who again, sometimes I do wish that they had kept themselves together a little bit more tonight because it makes it very hard to defend them with that sort of behaviour. But I can understand it, the frustration that these two must be feeling by having their names dragged into the public domain yet again, because heaven forbid we let ICAC get on with their investigation quietly and come up with their findings either way. We don't know what they are, but we are preempting it. Where is the presumption of innocence? Where is due process? A very wise magistrate said to me once years ago, you can say anything about anybody and it's up to them to prove their innocence. And we have a classic example of this here now. Yes, it's been referred to ICAC, but the Office of Local Government wasn't interested in it. It's been referred to ICAC, perhaps, they could contribute to an investigation on much, on a much grander scale than, than what we know. And by standing here talking about it again every three months or however often we've got to be doing it, we're drawing more attention to it, potentially compromising any sort of investigation that might be ongoing and talking about ourselves again, rather than getting on with the business of council. You know, one of the things I would have loved to have seen on the business paper um, but it would have been probably too late because of the cutoff was 
Why did somebody ask about the um, state government's introduction of the bill to parliament to allow councils to phase their harmonisation in over four years? That would have been a good thing for us to be talking about tonight. But again, we're in the situation of we're revisiting something that we settled last year at the end of last year. It's a very fine line. The councillors are very evenly balanced on this. I don't want to keep talking about this. I just wanted to get on with the rest of this term. Stop targeting each other and I'm not going to withdraw that. Kick me out of the chamber if you need to, but I am really sick and tired of the nonsense that has gone on for the last, I don't know, three and a half, four years almost within this chamber of people targeting each other and, and codes of conduct raised and this nonsense that we're dealing with again tonight should never have got to this point. We should not be dealing with it again tonight. We should be talking about where in the hell we're going to put our new aquatic facility that our, our residents are begging us for, yet we're wasting time on this nonsense. So let's cut this off now. Councillors vote against this motion. Give it the credit that it doesn't deserve by voting against this motion. Councillor Greckis, I think you're entitled to a right of reply as there was no other speaker for the motion. Yes, thank you. That's a lot to respond to. I guess, firstly, um, I would just say to Councillor Hindi, you can try to throw uh, as much mud at me as all you want, but there's only two councillors under investigation by ICAC and I'm not one of them. Uh, as I said in December, and it's worth repeating tonight, um, it is the height of arrogance that the councillors who know that they are under investigation by ICAC have point not already order, accused them. Point of order, Ms. Councillor Battelotti. The term, the height of arrogance. Yeah, Councillor Grekis, I think you should withdraw that. Okay, that's fine. I will be and Councillor sure Grekis, and respond Councillor Grekis, yes? can I just say there's been an enormous amount of emotive language here tonight, and if we could just keep your response uh, tight, concise, and sure. unemotive. Thank you. Okay, I guess the, the only issue I really wanted to raise is, um, I guess we have to ask ourselves why the Minister for Local Government still has not intervened in this. Uh, and I do thank and acknowledge that Mr. David Shoebridge, MLC, he raised this very issue with the Minister and the Chief Executive of the OLG in uh, recent budget estimates. Look, um, I'm not, I can count, I'm not a fool. Uh, I realize that this motion may go down tonight. And if it is defeated, um, those of you who vote against it will have to explain to our community why you repeatedly voted. Our point of um, order, Mr. Mayor. You can't, you can't talk about reputation. Thank you, Councillor Castani. Sorry, what'd you say? You can't talk about Councillor's reputation. Yeah, again, a motive. Thank you, Councillor Castani. I've taken your point of order. Yeah, as I say, well, you can do that. Um, Councillor Greg is unabated. Thank you. Okay, so if it does go down, rest assured, Councillor Lansbury, you're exactly right. I will continue to raise it every three months because come September, I will be very happy to be on the record for standing against corruption allegations and for doing everything I could to try and get councillors to do the right thing, regardless of the re retribution that I've faced. Um, I guess you will have to explain uh, so, to our... Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor, point of order. This is exactly the point about retribution she told the police. That's exactly what was told to the Council, police. Councillor Hindi, I will say Councillor okay. Hindi, if you're worried about the term retribution, I'm happy to ask Councillor Greckers yes, to withdraw you. that term. Thank you. There's no need to yell at the microphone. Thank you, Councillor Greckers. Have you finished? Um, no, I guess I just ask yourself, um, you know, what would your community expect of you? And, you know, can you justify your decision to vote against this um, when you face voters in September? Because I suspect his history will not be kind to those who continue to uh, to vote against this. Thank I will you. Conclude there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll, uh, I'll put Leslie speakers for and against it. Obviously, this is going to go to the vote. So I'll uh, ask if the executive manager could. Uh, do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll start with your vote, please. Uh, for the motion. Councillor Badalati. Against. Thank you. Councillor Elmia. For the motion. Councillor Grokas. For. Councillor Hindi. Against. Against. Thank you. Councillor Castanius. 
Against. Thank you. Councillor Catrus. Against the motion. Councillor Konjarski. I'm for the motion. Councillor Lansbury. Against. Councillor Liu. For. Councillor Payer. Against. Councillor Symington. Against. Councillor Teg. All the motion. Councillor Wu. Against. Eight votes against, Mr Mayor. To clear the motion lost, we now move to the next motion on the agenda, which is the status update. Uh, Councillor Greckus, is there a second to this motion? Councillor Symington, thank you. Councillor Greckus? Yep, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I thought it prudent to reintroduce this or ask for an update, um, particularly with the start of winter sport. Um, we all know how popular particularly um, soccer is becoming, and there's just simply not enough um, field space for our local kids and clubs who want to participate. Um, and, you know, you often see pristine uh, sporting grounds on the grounds of schools. Um, and I think this was one of the first uh, notices of motion that I introduced, I think, in 2017. And unfortunately, I haven't seen uh, much, much progress on this um, topic. Not so much, definitely not from our council, our, sorry, our council staff perspective. But I think there's been perhaps some stalling at the state government level. So, um, you, you know, if, I just would love to, I guess, reinvigorate this and see whether we can get access to Department of Education uh, sporting facilities and, I guess, broader community facilities as well. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, support this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Simon, do you wish to speak to that? No, I reserve Okay. Right. In that case, I'll... Sorry, Councillor Battalotti. Mr. Mayor, this is an issue that has been around for years and years. The Education Department, met quite a few years back, gave approval for schools to be able to uh, lease out their sporting grounds, etc. But they left it up to the headmaster of each school. And I'll give an example at um, Kingsgrove High School on the corner of Stony Creek Road and Kingsgrove Road. They have a football field at the back. And um, council at the time approached the headmaster uh, if he would allow uh, clubs to use it for training. And uh, the clubs at the time said they would put extra lighting in, um, but the headmaster refused to allow it. So until the education department gives a directive, <coughs> excuse me, to all school headmasters that local community sporting clubs are to be allowed to use their facilities, well then, not much can happen. So, um, my understanding, Councillor Battalotti, was actually that uh, that the local principal could not stand in the way; that it wasn't up to them anymore. It was it was the Department of Education policy to to encourage this, uh, you know, shared space. So, um, I don't yeah, know if yeah. that is the case. I don't know why. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, Gregor, what the I think you're uh, you, you're both in agreement, basically. Yeah. 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 It's okay. a decision by the headmaster. Uh, and as I say, uh, Councillor Battalotti, you know that I did a report in my previous life uh, about this in 2006 or seven, I think it was. And yeah, yeah in my previous parliamentary life. And uh, I chaired a committee that actually looked at this. And also Councillor Battalotti would remember, I think he was the mayor at the time. And we initiated discussions, as I also initiated discussions with COGRA Council, and there was uh, uh, use of uh, GRC at Oatley, um, and some of those, so, so some principals 
were a team and going right back. I mean, I know St George used to train at, uh, at James Cook uh, for many years. And also at one stage, St George also had their junior repsides training at Kingsgrove High. So it's just, a, it's just a case of trying to get some people on board. So I put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. aye. Against, declare it carried. Councillor Elmia, is there a second out of this? Second, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Thank you, Councillor Elmia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I'm just looking through um, my papers. Uh, Mr. Mayor, my motion tonight is really just asking uh, Council's traffic engineers to investigate the turning movements at the intersection of Linwood Street and Phillips Street after a number of representations made by residents within the area. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, uh, this is in uh, smack bang in the middle of Lakehurst Ward, but it also is a very active thoroughfare uh, into Blakehurst and one of the only access points into Blakehurst, uh, naturally having quite a large number, a large volume of vehicles traveling in and out of Blakehurst. Um, the issues that have been raised by residents are those of significant safety concerns given the fact that May Day Catholic primary school is just across the road and at the moment we have a situation especially during early morning peaks and afternoon peaks where parents are dropping off their kids uh, to May Day. They will park in Linwood Street and walk across the road across King George's Road to, to drop off their kids at school. Now the thing that raised this that raised concern with the residents was the fact that they've witnessed firsthand a number of near misses and it would be very sad to see such a, a unfortunate incident occur down there and not being able to do something about it now all i'm really asking is for council's traffic engineers to really look at this in detail uh, to investigate uh, all the safety traffic congestion, school, school pick up and drop off zones down there, and for those recommendations or investigations to be reported reported to the traffic committee for consideration. Uh, so, councillors, I put this motion forward to you and uh, and hope that you'll be able to support it. Thank you, Councillor Castanis. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to suggest a slight amendment to uh, Councillor Almir's motion. There was a community member who raised some concerns not only with those two streets but not far from those two streets there is church street blakehurst which there is a big park there and it's same as you know children's safety similar sort of you know similar aspects uh you know school zones and other children being uh, at risk for safety issues along that road also so if you're comfortable councillor me would you include church street as well in your investigation Councillor uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe that Church Street is currently under some transport for New South Wales road widening project. So at this point in time, let's just wait for that. Can, is it, can yeah, anyone it, enlighten any, any information? Yes, I didn't get that information via email. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, well, was, uh, well you, remember we had that dis the, the briefing from Transport New South Wales about 18 months ago about that work no. that's taking place in and around. That's, Sorry, that's the I, work to which you're referring. I just sent an email to one of the, you know, officers, and they yeah. replied that they didn't reply with anything like that. Yeah. So, well, I is that what you're referring food. to, Councillor Elmi? Yes, correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right. So, so, so all right. No, that's fine. Then. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hini, my apologies. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Did I hear Councillor Elmi say there was been accidents around there? Is that correct? Uh, he said there was uh, some incidents that parents were concerned about with the children crossing. Did you say I, I, I didn't have accidents? I maybe I'll stand correct. No, I, I didn't say any accidents. I said near misses. Yeah, um, where they witnessed near misses. Yes. Oh, okay. Because I was I was very concerned because with the palm port, I heard some councillors say in the committee that because there's little pranks here and there, we should get rid of the car park and make it into a park. So I was wondering that we should do Linwood Street as a park as well. So not every time we have an accident that we've got to turn something into a park. So anyway, I agree with this um, motion. I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against, aye. carry. Uh, Councillor Badalati, is there a second to this? Uh, Mr. May, I um, will withdraw this motion for now. All right, thank you. That's withdrawn. 
Thank you. We knew Councillor Badalati, you've got another motion. But I will bring it back. Would, would you like to put the other, your second, you've got another motion? Oh, yes. Thank you. Is there a second there to the Bocce motion? That's the one we're talking about. Yeah. Councillor Hindi. Thanks, Councillor Badalati. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, Mr. May, I've been approached by quite a few uh, elderly Italian uh, gentlemen about council providing a bocce court at um, a Smith Park at Kingsgrove. Sorry, Councillor, I don't know what a bocce court is. What's a bocce court? Uh, Councillor Hidney, European it's a European game lawn bowls. of lawn bowls, but you actually, but you actually throw. Yes, I've seen that, but I didn't Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, earlier this year, a new Italian group started at the Kingsgrove Community Aid Centre, and. Um, it started as a small group of 10 people. It's now up to over 100 uh, people. One of the things that they have asked for as uh, exercise is the provision of a bocce court. Now, I noticed the director's comments say, uh, says that it's not consistent with the community strategic plan pillar three. And I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I thought we were trying to encourage elderly people to exercise, etc. cetera. Um, and the closest court is over at Campsie. So it's a fair way for elderly people to go. Now, we're looking at an approximate cost of $15,000. The uh, weekend for the little Chinese festival in the square cost council $20,000. Now, that's an annual cost, whereas this is a one-off cost. The cost of the little festival here was 30,000. They had 10,000 in sponsorship. So council put in 20,000. So Mr. Mayor, it's not a large sum in the scheme of things, uh, but I know it made quite a lot of people uh, happy um, and out exercising rather than staying at home. So I hope councillors can it's, support it's, it's, us, it's asking for a report. Yeah. It's asking yeah, for a yeah, report. Just, just clarify that for councillor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Any discussion? Put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Right. Against the clarity. Aye. Yeah. Against the clarity. Carry. Councillor Payer. Is there a second to Councillor Payer's? I'll second. Councillor Badalati. Thanks, Councillor Payer. I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last month, the members for Rockdale, Mr. Steve Camper, responded to the numerous complaints from residents on both sides of Rocky Point Road. He wrote to the Transport Minister, the Hon. Andrew Constance, with this letter objecting to the removal of the bus stops, providing sound reasons, and I'd like to table this along with the notification of the proposed changes by transport from New South, for New South Wales. Bayside Council also unanimously supported a motion such as this last month because Transport for New South Wales stated they are working with bus operators and local councils on these changes. I'd like to ensure that George's River Council has input on this proposal too. The former Cogra Council provided for increased density with high rises along this road as a transport corridor, but these zoning changes are not visible as yet and need to be taken into consideration with this proposal. The proposed removal of four bus stops, being two on each side of the road, appears to be based on the distance between bus stops on the same sides of the road. However, one half of everyone's journey requires crossing over Rocky Point Road. In this area, it's a seven lane wide road for which you have to use a signalised crossing. 
This adds to the walking distance between bus stops and must be taken into account too. It is vital that bus transport facilities, greater access, inclusion and participation of people with disabilities in this community with good, connect with good connectivity to access employment, education, medical appointments and community resources. We want everyone to keep using these buses and not change to car use for which there's not enough parking at Cobra. Support for this motion will be the final step into bring, bringing together a coalition of local residents, the local member, the both local councils in communicating in a worthy review of this process. Pro, pro, proposal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak for or against? Put the motion all in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against? Declare it carried. Uh, questions with notice? Councillor Catrus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm actually quite satisfied with the response from the council officers, but I do have a further question. All right, so I just what... need a second of Councillor Castanius. Thank you. Councillor yeah. Catrus. Just a quick question, Mr. Mayor. The, um, one of the residents, um, Ms. Bork, um, indicated that there appears to be a bias towards uh, grant funding and um, putting in applications for grants to um, for cricket facilities and infrastructure and also golfing facilities and infrastructure. Um, I understand that the council officers put many, many grants um, uh, through, the, through the process of trying to obtain those grants. Um, do we have, at the, I mean, this may be a question that's on notice, do we have any applications at the present moment for, or in the, do we envisage any applications in the, um, in the future? for um, uh, grants pertaining to other codes like soccer and uh, whatever other... You know. Well, Councillor Catrus, as you know, we've had extensive uh, grants obtained um, mm -hmm. across the area. Uh, I remember your passion for the one at Parkside Drive, uh, mm -hmm. the upgraded facilities there for uh, winter sport. Uh, similarly, uh, there's been uh, the one at Renown Park. There was also the one at Oatley Park. There was also the one at Gannons Park. There was the one at Riverwood Park. There was the one at Peakers Park. All of those uh, off the at Pulton Park. All of those were for winter sports codes, and all of those uh, involved business cases. So, uh, as councillors know, um, you know there's been extensive work undertaken um, across all those sports. In fact, I was just going past the, the Ken Rosewell Tennis Centre today, where I noticed the replacement of the uh, of fencing there, uh, which has uh, been a, a, on the, the request from the tennis community. Uh, also, there was resurfacing of court, if I remember correctly, because of uh, some issues there. Um, so there's cross codes. In fact, the majority of our uh, funding, certainly in the last four years, but probably in the last 44 years, has been for winter sports codes, and understandably so. Does thank that you, answer Mr. your Mayor. question, Councillor Yes, it does. Uh, thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor, the, the Aussie Rules um, at Olds Park has been very well supported by Council and to be fair, state government over the years, including a recent upgrade to the surface on all and the sure, And of course, and of course, we ourselves uh, just upgraded. Uh, Councillor Battelardi was passionate about the upgrade of the, uh, the the field, which covers all sports at Beverly Hills Park, uh, rugby league and um, football in the winter, uh, cricket in the summer. Though cricket weren't able to use that, of course, because it uh, was being returfed. And as we know, the growth season is in. Uh, spring and summer. Okay, thanks Councillor Catrus. We now move to, oh sorry, we didn't vote on that. Uh, it was the motion was to be received and noted. I put the motion all in favour, say aye. Aye. Against, declare aye. it carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hindi. Mr Mayor. Is there a seconder to this that I presume you're just moving it be received and noted? I'm receiving a note for the question. Thank you. Councillor Badalati seconded that. Thank you. Mr Mayor. Um, I've had numerous people call me from the community that are very, very concerned about our councillors 
and they said they will not forgive us when it comes to the next local government election in September if we do not receive a legal advice that tells us what we have voted on is legal about cut demolition of Cars Park Pool. So I was very concerned that as council, and we raised a concern at the last meeting, that we need to know whether this motion is lawful or unlawful. And the response I get from the general manager, I've requested staff to obtain legal advice, advice on this matter. Um, can I ask a question? I'm sure we do have a very well qualified legal person in our council. And is there a reason why we can't get a, uh, a response from that? Before? Yeah, because you actually asked at the last meeting, and I agreed with you, to get external legal advice. So would that take four weeks from the last meeting? Well, hopefully you'll get it quickly. I'm, uh, is, that's that, I'm just... No, no, thank you, Mr. I appreciate it's exactly right, and I appreciate this. Yeah, and it's external legal advice. I have no issue if it's... If it's because it says here that had requested the staff to obtain legal advice. It didn't say external legal advice. Yeah, that, was, that was your request at the time, no, no, I which I exceeded. Yeah. Remember, yeah. You remember, yeah. I said I'm happy to Thank you. accede to that. Thank so. you. So what we're going to say to the community tonight is we are waiting on an external legal advice that would confirm or deny or tell us whether it's lawful or unlawful. Because, I don't, as I said, it doesn't matter which way it goes, as long as we know that what this council has voted for is a legal motion. And that's, so, that's, that's the response. So are yeah. we hoping, Mr Mayor, just a question to the general manager, are we hoping to get something in the next week or so? Is that, is that possible or is that going to be... I mean, it's a simple matter. Anyone can actually give you an advice. It's a simple matter. We're just... Can I, can, I can, I, can I suggest, Councillor Hindi, within this week we will make sure we, oh, sorry, within the next two days we will follow up with the external advice uh, to get the, you know, the, yeah, the timeline on that. Is that okay? I, I'm concerned about getting the timeline is not actually getting the advice. No, of course. Well, sure. what I'm saying is we'll, getting, we'll be, I was going to say put pressure, but that's not the right term. And we, we will be following up is it possible mr mayor to and ask, you will give and you will receive that advice is it possible mr mayor to ask is it possible mr mayor to ask and i want to put pressure on this stuff is it possible to ask that we can get something by next monday that's seven days plus the other four four weeks we had that's five weeks i think we'll certainly follow it up and do it if we can get it okay. if councillors are happy that we we ask for an advice to be given to councillors by next monday of the council. That's Thank you. All right. So the motion needs to be received and noted. Seconded by Councillor Badalani. Put the motion on the favour. Say aye. Against the carry. Carry. Um, Councillor Hindi is the next question. If you Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, what do you wish to move the recommendation? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to move the uh, receiving note. But right. right. Is there a second that to that? Councillor Badalani. Thank I, you. I need to ask a question, Mr. Mayor. The first one is the officer's response that there's only 600,000 that say outstanding, not 4 million. Now, someone must have got that report from the auditors that showed 4 million that went to the papers. So could the general manager explain the the discrepancy in if you don't discrepancy. Well, as you know, we've been briefed on this on two occasions, but I'm happy for the general manager. We've been briefed on it on two occasions okay. by the director, yeah. and I'm happy for the general manager to again put on record uh, what has been provided. Well, I'm asking asking now, I know what has been put on the record in previous briefings, so that's okay. good. Thank All you. Right. Excellent that we can clarify because we don't want misinformation out in the community. I agree. Thank you. So Mr. Mayor, the reference to the $4 million was a reference to an amount shown in a confidential report to the ARIC committee. Unfortunately, uh, whoever leaked it to the Herald didn't brief the reporter properly. And the reporter has responded by reporting that $4 million was owing to the council when that was not the amount that was suggested in the report. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I get it wrong? I'm sorry, my apologies. The report suggested $4 million. I just want to get... No, 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 that's not what the we said. The report said $4 million. Let, well, let the general manager finish the full explanation. Thank you. Oh, oh. You'll need to turn your microphone off. Uh, Mr Mayor, the report contained an amount of $4 million, which in the report said was owing to the council. Unfortunately, the the reporter did not 
report, the rest of the report, which quite clearly said that there, of that amount that was owed to the council, only 600,000 had fallen due and the rest remained still owing to the council but had not yet fallen due. Um, unfortunately, the Herald only reported the $4 million amount. Um, I think council's aware that the, the government has changed the rules around the payment of developer contributions, so things that um, originally may have been due to the council are no longer due until an occupancy certificate has been granted or able to be deferred. So uh, I think there's been some misreporting in the Herald around what was owed to the council as against what was due to the council. Sorry, Mr Mayor, I must have misunderstood. Um, I think Ms Connolly said Four million originally. Um, six hundred thousand was six hundred thousand was due recovered. And no, no, no. That's no. That's not what she said. She said there was four million dollars, six hundred thousand of which was due, and that was followed up. And if I remember correctly from the previous reports and the previous briefings we had, that six hundred thousand dollars was collected over the next three or four months. Of what happened to the other 3.4 million? Well, that other 3.4 million was paid on uh, as as it as it became due. But the director is keen to again brief you as she has done previously. Thank you. No, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I just want to understand. Yeah, so you're happy with the answer I've just given? Then? No, it's not. Well, well. No, the general manager has said that that changed the rules on when you can collect the developer contribution. Yes, they did. It was only changed last year. Not three years ago, not four years ago, not five years ago. So if you had a DA that was already approved, you don't fall into that. It's when you've got your DA now that falls into it. So we've read the rules. So that's not when they fall due. They were due. It's not when they fall due. The report was correct from the Arab committee. It was due to us. Point of order, um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes, Councillor Teague. Um, Councillor Hitt is not asking a, a question. He's I'm making comments. Some I'm, I'm actually comments debating. That reflect upon the competency of our staff and the answers that's already been given. Oh, stop giving me that every uh, time. Uh, please, Councillor, it's my comment. Can, yeah, Councillor Hindi. Well, do, do you wish to make? Do you wish to ask, you ask the general manager a yeah, question, uh, which the general manager gave an answer to? Yeah, Councillor Councillor Battelardi followed up with a, which I gave an answer to. The director indicated her willingness to again clarify any points that you were uncertain of. No, the, the, the director is prepared to come forward and clarify that. Can I that, no, wait wait a second. second? I actually was interrupted during my, my debate. But, I, will but, stop, I will stop till late. That was by Councillor Badalati asking a question. Quick question. Councillor, sorry, to the director. Thank sorry. you. I'm, I'm just confused on this because um, I thought the general manager said the figure was four million. Right, of which six hundred thousand was due. Right. My question is, what happened to the other three point four million? The director is happy to answer that. Yeah, thank as you. I've just answered yeah, it, but the director I... will answer it. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Badalani and Councillor Hindi, uh, as indicated that the issue, so I'm just going to start to put it in context, all right? And I, I briefed you on this before. We are doing an audit on the recovery of the contributions program in three stages. The first stage is looking at the 712s on the 94 applications for COGRA. Those, that money has now been accounted for, and I'll talk about that in a minute, which is that reference to the formula. The second processes that we're doing is we are looking at the 712s or the 94As for the former Cogra area and the Georges River. That, that, that process is still in place. And then the third issue is, of course, the issue around the 712s, sorry, the 711s for the former Hurstville area and Georges River. That process hasn't commenced. commenced. So in relation to the, the reference to the money that you're talking about, it related to eight applications. The majority of that money was related to a, a large application 
which you've made reference to, the, the three and a half million dollars, which is under the COGRA plan, COGRA development contributions plan allowed to be paid over stages. That's what's happening. And the general manager which one was in, it? Which one and then it? the general manager I, I'm not going to say that in public because it's because it's a confidential it's matter. A confidential. It's, really confidential. it's actually it should be on our website. It should be on the website. Everyone knows that. How can it be confidential? That's the hidden. Councillor Hindi, legal. Councillor Hindi, Councillor Hindi, the director is answering Councillor Battalati's question. Councillor Battalati, do you need any further and, explanation? And the Thank general you. manager is correct that, of course, parts of that of that three and a half million have started to be paid as per the consent and as per the stage payments. But as the general manager is correct, because of the the introduction of the state government changes that contributions don't have to be paid to OC for some of these larger developments. That's what they've applied. In relation to the other seven applications, uh, the money has been recovered or it is not required to be recovered because the applications have been withdrawn or, or the consents have lapsed. So therefore, the money that's been identified uh, um, has been a, a, is, is accounted for. Thank, thank you. All right, Councillor Hindi, did you have any further comment on your motion to receive the notes? Three and a half million dollars, which it was, and no one's going to tell us which one it is. They don't fault you because it was only a year ago that the minister gave his direction. It wasn't three years ago and four years ago and whatever. It was only a year ago. So they couldn't have fallen in that. Councillor Hindi, Councillor Hindi, mm. the director has given an answer. Hey, I'm just, it's, not I'm your, my it's not your position to reflect on that answer. It is my comment I'm making. It doesn't mean I, that I, I disagree. I'm just making my comments. That's what I'm saying. I'm entitled to make yeah, my just, comments. If I'm going to agree with the staff every five minutes, I might as well go home. I'm, I'm just giving you my comments, what I believe. Now, I could be wrong too. I'm just saying. I'm not saying, I'm not accusing the staff of anything they did in, inappropriate. There's none of that. In fact, on the contrary, I believe the Georgia's Rev staff who've been in the planning, headed by uh, Ms. Bishop, have been excellent. Much better than the people we had in person. Much better. They have been excellent. We start from Ms. Bishop to Catherine to, to Ryan and all that, it's been terrific. So it's not their fault that it's been happening down the back. All I was trying to is put together is that if the four million dollars was incorrect as a general manager that we have twenty nine media staff or eight, seven, I don't know how many, we could have written back to the paper and saying, What you have said is incorrect. It's not four million, it's six hundred. Oh, have you done that? It's been, it's been over three months. What do you mean we're just going to do it now? We could write and then councils go, wow, look what we've written. We're happy with that. So why hasn't that been done? I don't, I don't want to answer. I just believe it hasn't been because I haven't read it. It's not there. To say it's we, we've got no control over what the Herald publishes. Yes, we don't, but we leak information to them. Anyway, um, which well, whoever, whoever, obviously, whoever leaked this information must have been very stupid because they've obviously leaked information that's not fully correct. It's probably, oh. There's only two people that had the report, if, if they did, I don't know. And it's councillor in there and councillor of the other person. I don't know who. Well, we don't, none of us had the report. Anyway, so then again, brings us, let's put that to the side, brings us to the Hurstville Council because there was a comment made that that the scheme that was done by, uh, administered by the former Hurstville and Congress Council, that Hurstville Council, I thought we haven't done Hurstville. Suddenly we're saying it's deficiency in the Hurstville Council. How do we know we have deficiencies in Hurstville Council? How do we know we have that? For you, Mr. Mayor, to the general manager. How do we know we have if we have the general manager? If we have an order, I think that's answered in the, the full. No, totally no, no, I think it's answered. Oh, but I'll let no. the general manager answer. Yep. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as far back as May 2019, the council was informed that there were deficiencies across both the former councils. Uh, registers and the uh, tracking, calculation, and collection of Section 94 developer contributions by private certifiers. So uh, the council has been aware of the three stage audit. The first stage was obviously the, the Congress stage, as the director was referred to. The next stage was always uh, looking at the Hurstville contributions. That's the uh, point of the audit that commenced uh, six, 12 months ago. Uh, council has been apprised of the status of that progress on a number of occasions. Okay, thank you. So we don't know how much is missing at this stage till we do the audit. We don't know how much we haven't collected. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. 
the audit has not been completed, so the total amount of any uh, outstanding contributions for former Percival Council is not yet known. Okay, I hope we can find that and that will be good. Okay, thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay, uh, put the motion, all in favour of the motion, please say aye. Right. Yes, declare it carried. Yeah. Excuse me, um, to the next question on notice. Yeah. Councillor Hindy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The aim of this question is Oh, apologies, yeah. I needed a second of that. My, I'll second my own number one. Yeah, Councillor Battle is keen to second. Thank you, Councillor. I've asked a question in here because there was an article in the paper that said it's the private certifier who have not been collecting the contribution. I read an article in the paper that said that said one of the person hasn't paid the money and he said I gave the council a bank guarantee. They didn't catch it. What do you want me to do about it? So how did the private certifier is at fault here? It's clear. He said, he got it from the private certifier, gave it to the council, and the bank guarantee or the check has personal city council or Cogra city council on it. So how can the private certifier be at fault if the council doesn't catch it? So that's why we are saying it's a private certifier. Yes, we don't have control of the private certifier when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the administering the site and authorised work and all that because we report it to the board. But we had every right, we have the authority. Council has no authority to police or regulate private certifiers. Of course we have authority. If the person's collecting our money, he's not giving it to us, of course we have an authority to say, where's the money? I don't understand that. Someone goes through and collects money for the Red Cross, and the Red Cross says, money? I'm not giving it to you. Of course you have the right to ask them where the money is. They're collecting it on our behalf. So we have every right to ask, where is the money? Our register says, if we are missing the money, you haven't given them to us. Why are we blaming the private certifier? It's a council issue, not a private certifier. We need to chase up the private certifier to ensure we obtain it and the check. In fact, I have heard clearly, people have given council checks that bounce on purpose, and council doesn't bother chasing it. Right? And you say, are you working an allegation? I will put it to other people when it comes to the day. People have told me they give checks to council and they bounce on purpose and they don't chase it. And that's why all this is missing. So, so what we're saying is we don't have a problem with the private certifier, it's his fault, not ours. Well, why didn't we, why didn't we catch the bank guarantee? It's in our name. When the check's given, he's not given in the private certifier's name, it's given in our name. It's given to us. And cash, we don't tick the boxes, we don't say we've got the money. I don't understand how the private certifier would blame the private certifier. Then when it comes, he's collecting money on our behalf. When he, when the private certifier goes and does an inspection of the CC and the jobs, he's not doing it on our behalf. He does it on part of the board. It's up to them. Nothing to do with us. He gets it wrong and worse comes to us for the last resort and we'll chase it up. But you get this. But this money is collecting for us, he's our representative. Are we saying we're not going to keep an eye on him to see if he's giving us the money or not? It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, it's interesting comment to say that we don't have authority to police or regulate certifies you. Of course we don't. We have to do it when it comes to money. It's our money. Everything else is fair trade in someone else, but this is our money. So we should be chasing them to say, where is our money according to our register? You now. It's very simple. And they give us all the documentation. When that's a CC, this is people thinking that when a private certifier issues a CC, they think he takes it home and puts it in the bottom drawer. The private certifier doesn't put it in the bottom drawer. In fact, he brings it to council and says, here is all, all the documents that are collected from the developer. Here is the check. Here's everything here for you to file and to check. And we do have people that check them. They meant to check him, oh yeah, he's done this, he's done that. A lot of them check and say, oh, storm water's not right. How, how can you issue this? It's not correct. Well, this is right. So that's what they do. Our staff will check it and check the check. The money's been paid, whatever. Simple. When no C's done, it goes to council. The council, the OC. His council got issued the no C. And the council says, but you haven't collected the money. Most of them will be at the CC stage, obviously, not the OC, but why haven't you? Oh. That's clear. So anyway, I'm not going to get in there when we're blaming the private certifier. Yes, they are at fault for not electing someone, but it's also our duty to ensure that we make sure it's been happening. Because if you leave it up to the private certifier, and we all know what's been happening with the high-rise, 
we're going to get nothing, no money. So it is our duty to ensure that the money is collected on behalf of the residents of George's River Council to be spent within the LGA. And if we don't have it, we'll be in the region. Thank you. Any wish to speak? If not, I'll put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. They'll be received and noted. Second, uh, all in favour of the motion, say aye. Against, declare it carried. And uh, I'd also like to reiterate uh, Councillor Hindi's comments that uh, um, the director and her staff are doing an excellent job and we congratulate them again as we did last meeting on the uh, the work that they are doing uh, not only in this area uh, but also uh, in many other areas of development so thank you to thank you. Uh, the status is the next one councillor Hindi another question with notice yes thank you mr mayor I don't know why it talks about status project investigation that's not the heading that I put in. I don't know why they put it in there. Again, they're trying to put it, it's Adelaide and Hindi investigation, let's just get it. Why would this, I never put that status for ITAC investigation. Mine was leaking of confidential information. I didn't ask for a status of ITAC investigation. That's not what I asked, but let's just make sure we keep rubbing it in. And we're saying it's not personal. General Manager Gar Collins is Yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah, all right, thank you. And let's say, General Manager, it's, no. it's, it's actually com in the question it actually talks about it, okay? But then no, it says about confidential information, not yes. the status of it. Not the first, yeah, come on, keep leaking going. confidential information. Gal, uh, General Manager Gal Con Ms. Gail Conley is extremely concerned about leaking of confidential information which undermines the integrity of council. I agree on that. We all agree. She referred is that she referred the leak of confidential information to IT for investigation. That's good. As the general manager referred to ITEC situation, I have confidential information found its way into the submission made to the council on the 14th of December in a public meeting of a private resident who lives in the same street as Ms. Conley prior to any councillors being informed of confidential information. Councillor Hindi. Yes, it does. We're not. Councillor Hindi. He leaves it. Councillor Hindi. And he gets coached by. Councillor Hindi. Is what? Stick is who. I am. Does he get coached? Councillor Hindi. The answers are there, one, two, and three. Yeah, but it Is there mean, anything else that you require? Yes, it doesn't mean it hasn't answered the question. I want, I want to look at the answer. So it says yes, and thank you for that. You've done it. Thank you. It's been done. If not, why not? Should you have done it? Has there also been an independent investigation commenced leaking of confidential information? It says refer to that. Yes, it has been. Yep. On. The question is, we are so concerned about leaking of confidential information to media out Why was the confidential information on 19th of March 2019 leaked to the media prior to the report written on the 2nd of April, which I have the documents in my hand? Oh, I'm just concerned about leaking of information. We seem to go and target certain areas of leaking of information. Councillor, like this one, I you've, asked, yes. you've asked a specific question about specific information, which the answer has been provided. Okay. All right. I'll speak to that. Thank Put you. the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, Councillor Badaloni. Yeah. Um, what I'm concerned about, the original motion in April last year was referred to OLG and ICAC. OLG has come out publicly in Parliament and said that no rules were broken. Is that, is that a question? If the OLG is saying no rules. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was circulated. But anyway, again, we're talking about Excuse me, excuse me, Councillor Badaloni, we're talking about the 14th of December here. No, excuse me, the fix, Councillor Hindi, talking about leaking of information. information. And, and the question is, has the general matter, excuse me, Councillor Badaloni. We're talking about leaking of information. What I'm saying is that if the OLG came out and said that no rules were broken. Why was information leaked to the media? 
if we knew the answer to that, uh, yeah. excuse me, excuse me, thank you. As I said, there's an investigation being undertaken. As any anything else you wish to raise? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. This doesn't make this not be an investigation. The microphone's on, on, Mr. Mayor. We can't hear this. The because... information has not been. We're talking about the 19th of March leak and you know, the investigation to the media. That, that wasn't the question. The question was the subsequent. That was article on the second of April. Yeah, that was a question. All right, put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against, declare it carry. Councillor Payer, is there a council? Councillor Payer, is there a second to your? Thank you, Councillor Lansbury. Councillor Payer, the floor is yours. Thank you. I move to receive a note. It's been received. Move to receive a note. Second to Councillor Lansbury. Put the motion. All in favour of the motion, please say aye. Against, declare it carry. Councillors, that brings us to the end of the open session of uh, the council meeting. And. Uh, We'll now move to, well, Council's Code of Media Practice allows members of the public present, well, obviously there aren't any, uh, wish they make, wish to make representations. Uh, so we'll just move through that. The recommendations in accordance with the provisions has been moved by Councillor Castanius, uh, that the CCL 007A21 transport for New South Wales uh, be moved uh, but in accordance, I better read it. In accordance with the provisions of Part One of Chapter Four of the Local Government Act, 1903, the matters dealt with in this report be considered in closed council meeting, in which the press and public are excluded. In accordance with Section 10A2C, it is considered the matter information that would, if disclosed, confer a commercial advantage on a person within the council is conducting or proposed to conduct business. And in accordance with Section 10D, it is considered that if the matter were discussed in an open council meeting, it would be on balance, be contrary to the public interest as if, as if information that would, if disclosed, confer a commercial advantage on a person within the council is conducting or proposes to conduct business. Um, therefore, that in accordance with the provisions of Section 11.2 of the Act, the reports and correspondence related to these matters be held from the person public. So the motion is we thank you, Councillor Castanius, second ed Councillor Payer, that we revert to closed session. Put the motion all in favour say aye. Against, declare it carried. Thank you, Councillors. And we'll just wait for the appropriate technical aspects to be undertaken. Okay, thank you, councillors. I'll now call for a motion to adopt the resolutions from closed session, and that motion would be that the committee of the whole recommendations from the closed session in relation to items CCL 007A 21 transport for New South Wales commuter car park the recommendation. Edge Bash and Road Beverly Hills of this meeting be received and noticed resolution of council without any alteration or amendment. Move yes. Councillor Hindi, seconded uh, Councillor uh, Castanius. All in favour say aye, against carry. Also, the that the, the next one is that the committee of the whole recommendations from the closed session in relation to item CCL 016-21, appointment of independent members of the Georgia Audit Risk and Improvement Committee of this meeting be received and noted as resolution of council without any alteration or amendment thereto. Move Councillor Lansby, second to Councillor Payer, put the motion, all in favour say aye, against declare it carry. Councillors, Councillors, I take this opportunity to thank you for your attendance. Advise that it is 11 oh, and actually it's 10.59 according to uh, the thing in front of me. And I will remind you that um, weather permitting, 
the council's uh, charity golf day in support of the St George Southern Medical Research Foundation, which I think, Councillor Badalati, would this be its 20th year? Because the first one, I think, was in 2002. This was, uh, and uh, we hope that the weather improves and, uh, on Friday. That's right. Thank you. Put it team, come and see me. Declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. Good night. Thank you.